Welcome to Primetime College Football on ESPN tonight, the beginning of another season of Maction. Bowling Green taking on Kent State here at Dix Stadium in Kent, Ohio. Along with Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for joining us, and this is the time of the year that Ray and I hold dear to our hearts, the beginning of Maction. And I slate starting right away. I got so excited I jumped in on you, David. I mean, this is what I wait for around the calendar for November to come around and we get to see a little match. And there you see it right now, the schedule coming up. Some good ball games on tap. Yeah, you got a, a big rivalry game tomorrow night. NIU and Toledo, they're always contenders on Thursday. Bowling Green, the visitor, they're going to get the football first. And we're going to get a look at the young quarterback. He is back. A team that's used three QBs, but Jarrett Dagey might be the one. He's healthy, finally, and that, that's great news for Bowling Green. He started two games and then got injured, and he was outstanding when he played. And, you know, he's a coach's son. His older brother, Seth, who was the wide receivers coach for Bowling Green, played at Texas Tech, and, and Jarrett grew up immersed in that football environment, and he's way ahead in terms of understanding the offense, making reads, and com uh, his progressions, and he's extremely composed in the pocket. If Kent's going to break out of their offensive slump that's been nearly season long, they've got one guy who is sort of the jack of all trades for this group, Justin Rankin. And Rankin is a special guy because he plays a lot of different spots. He'll play in the slot, he'll play tight end, he played play wide, and because of that, they don't have to substitute to change their personnel groups. And that means Bowling Green's defense will not be able to sub guys out either. And it also helps that Rankin can make plays from all of those spots they put him in. So where it's about a low 40 degree evening, but no threat of precipitation and no breeze. Mike Jinx took him about a year to get that Texas blood yeah. thickened a little bit to deal with uh, Bowling Green and Ohio and Mac Weather. In his second season on the other sideline, Paul Haynes in his fifth for the Golden Flashes. In single safety, Matt Wilcox for Bowling Green. And we are about ready to get action underway. And both of these coaches, Dave, spoke about how important this showcase is of basically being the only game in town, the only game on. There is another MAC game on tonight, but it's very important to their programs to show well. Waiting for the referee, Kurt Johnson, to tell him we can play. He has my permission. Toe has met leather. Let's go. This will drive Wilcox back a couple of yards deep. He'll take a knee. We'll bring out the 25-yard line. And we'll take another look now at Jarrett Dagey. Freshman out of Lubbock, Texas. His brother is on the coaching staff, Seth Dagey. And if that name, he's a fairly recent college football player for the Red Raiders in his time. They've also used James Morgan. They've asked Grant Loy to play. But it looks like the Dagey, who was the first true freshman to start a quarterback, since 1982 when he started against Middle Tennessee. This is the one they won. Yeah, and he he's so composed and at ease in the pocket, especially for a true freshman. Uh, that's the thing that really stood out to me. And then he throws an, a really nice deep ball, extremely accurate, and he'll, he gets it out quick, which has been a problem for this Bowling Green offense when James Morgan was at the helm. The tailback is Josh Cleveland, the senior from Austin, but back to pass is Dagey. Hit as he throws, but it's going to be complete. And outside the 30-yard line, a catch made there by Janarvis Pugh, redshirt sophomore out of South Florida in Hollywood, actually. And they're going to give him about five, it looks like. And that was a little a touch, a taste of the composure that Dagey has, sitting back in that pocket. Yeah, the pressure's coming at him. He'll take the hit in order to deliver the football. The clap and the snap, and Cleveland breaking one tackle, trying to work his way outside very close to the marker. Might be right on it, as a matter of fact, before he was brought down. It's either going to be third and inches or first down. I thought the official pointed to first down, but apparently not. The well, chain gang isn't even sure. You're right, because one guy started to walk a few yards, then walked back. Now he is walking forward. It is a first down. And off here to Cleveland, at the time he is swallowed up in a sea of yellow for no gain. 
First hit made by Bo Alexander, a senior, ironically, another Floridian making a play in this weather out of Miami. Yeah, Bo Alexander is the quarterback of this Kent State defense. He makes all the adjustments, the calls in there. He's also a big fella, so he's going to take out some of the blockers, and it's the other linebacker spot that Jim Jones mans that ends up getting to make a lot of plays. Second and ten. Three receivers to the right of the QB. A little pitch here now to Cleveland. And he'll get six, maybe even seven yards. Alexander was in there again, along with Jim Jones, a junior from Tallahassee. All right, Lorenzo Taborn, the left guard, had himself a pancake block coming around the edge to open up that hole for Josh Cleveland. Andrew Clare comes in, number 32, as Cleveland will tap out for a couple of plays. Claire is a very, very good and promising player for this Falcon side. And you see exactly what we're talking about as the umpire slowed him down. Claire ran directly into Roger Day is the man who, who gets, a, he gets a tackle. Yeah. So we'll give Roger a tackle on the stat sheet. He made it. But you saw Claire watch this first move. Well, he's it's a nice little play. Fulkerman gets up and knocks the linebacker out of the way. But Claire breaks the, the arm tackle, runs over the umpire, and, and then picks up a few more yards. Unfortunately, the only person who didn't get up from all that is one of the Kent players. That's Theo E. Boigbe, a junior from Lithonia, Georgia, slow to get up. The umpire did get up. He's fine. Well, Claire became... The first true freshman with three 100-yard games in Bowling Green history, and he did them consecutively, the last three. Yeah, and they are, you know, people say, hey, he averages 7.2 yards per carry, and, and the fans say, give, give him the ball more. Well, coach says he's not quite ready for that. He's only 18 years old. He's had three fumbles. He, he just needs his, an offseason in their program to get a little more strength, you know, grow up a little bit more, and he will be a 25-carry-a-game uh, type of back. Well, Bowling Green got him away from Iowa, where he was nearly committed. They'll get it again. And you can see the quickness. He's got a little room to work with here. Down to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and just driven out of bounds there. A touchdown saving push by Demetrius Monday at the three yard line. A 43 yard pickup. His explosiveness, the acceleration, once he sees the, the open space. He hits the gas pedal and just takes off, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. I mean, there's nobody around him because of his speed. He got the edge, and it was almost gone, but Monday had the angle on him. And it will be clear in the end zone for the third time this season. A strong opening drive by Bowling Green to get on the board first. And they did it on the ground, basically. Just the opening pass. Uh, to Deggy for the short yardage to Pew, and after that it was between Cleveland and Claire. And you see Claire's numbers already solid on the evening, and Bowling Green looked sharp in their opening drive. And this Kent defense has struggled against the run, and you saw a little slice of that on that drive. Seven plays, 75 yards in two minutes and 49 seconds. Falcons have won the last four against the Golden Flashes, and they're off to a good start. The return of the anniversary trophy. You are an old school Kent State Bowling Green fan if you know what's at stake there. And we will explain the return of the anniversary trophy as the night wears on. Take another look at that touchdown, and this is really just nobody outside for the Kent defense. And Claire just takes advantage of it and hits the gas pedal, and away he goes. Bowling Green opens up with a nice drive, and now Kent will get their first shot with the football. And they've had some problems on offense. They're down to their third-string quarterback for the second consecutive year, and it's that's hard to make it work. It is. The injury to Nick Holly, uh, and it was funny. We were waiting for the players to come out, and they put up a hype video on the main scoreboard here, and Nick Holly's in that. You know, just shows what an important part he was going to be for this team, but not to be. Raquan James, Mike Kerrigan back deep for the Golden Flashes. James, there's going to be somebody named James turning kicks for this team, either Raymond James or Raquan James. Ray James has got the ball. You can't be wrong. <laughs> I find a way to mess it up. This will be James here, 15. 
And where is the tearaway jersey when you need it? He only gets to about the 20-yard line. Now we're going to get a look and see who the quarterback's going to be tonight for the Flashes because it's George Bolas that's been getting the start lately. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Bolas will get the start tonight, but they'll have Dustin Crum waiting in the wings if things don't go well with George. And Will Matthews, number 21, will come out as a tailback. Keep an eye for Rankin, number 11. We talked about at the top of the broadcast. Leads the team with 20 receptions. Also has run for about a four-yard average. But Kent has, without question, struggled on offense. You can't hide that fact. They have just one first-quarter touchdown all season, and that was against Howard University in Week 2. They'll come out and throw it to Rankin right away, and Bowling Green's D was waiting for him. That's a loss of four, and Fred Garth was not fooled. Uh, Fred Garth saw the back flare and triggered immediately and came up and made the play, and there was no one out there to put a block on him. Good reaction from that safety spot, and these safeties for Bowling Green are, are the leading tacklers on this football team, and that's not always a good thing. I was about to say, no, I was going to ask you if that's a great thing or not. Garth, that's his 59th tackle, the junior from Amory, Mississippi. Little jet sweep action here to Kerrigan, and Bowling Green's D is stout again. Back him up another yard, maybe even two. So the first two plays for Kent looks like Bowling Green knew exactly what was going to be coming. Nate Locke, the veteran middle linebacker in there on the stop. Yeah, two-time all-academic Mac linebacker Nate Locke has a 4.0 in biology and psychology. He knows a little bit about football, too. <laughs> well, give him 58 tackles on the year. He's out of Canton, which is pretty close to Kent. And this is not where the Golden Flash offense wants to be. Third and, and 15, third and forever. And this allows Bowling Green to start coming after him. Well, they better hurry and get the snap off. And they don't. I thought it was at zero, but there's no flag. Throw down the field. Oh, what an athletic interception at the 30-yard line. Out of bounds at the 23 by Cameron Jeffries. One-hander for the sophomore from Painesville in Bowling Green will get great field position. And are they happy the right. flag was not thrown for delay of game? Yeah, I think Kent State might want to uh, <laughs> take another look at that one because the play clock was definitely expired when they got this off. And that's just an up-for-grabs ball that Bolas had really no business throwing it up into that crowd. And a great play jumping up with, from the defensive spot was the corner, Jeffries. His first interception of the season, Bowling Green. Picking up their 18th takeaway. They have 12 fumble recoveries, but now six interceptions. And they'll turn to Josh Cleveland. And they like to take a shot here after a turnover. Let's see if they go downfield with Daigie. Nope, hand off to Cleveland instead. He'll take a shot down the field and come very close to a first down. Might even have it looking at the spot from the far official. Nice job of blocking down the field by Tio Redding, uh, the outside receiver. He knocked that cornerback 10 yards and still had him locked up when Cleveland showed up, and it is enough for a first down. It's a nice one-two running back punch they have with Cleveland and Claire. And then Donovan Wilson is the big back who will get some time in as well. Right now, though, to go to Cleveland, he bounces off of some good penetration by the Kent State defense. He'll pick up a couple there to the 11-yard line. John Cunningham, the senior from Bedford, Ohio, number 90 in there on the stop, along with a couple of others. And this offensive line for Bowling Green is a little bit banged up. They've got two new starters tonight. The normal center, Tim McCullough, is out, and that puts Caleb Bright in the lineup, making his first career start at center. He started a few games at guard. And then Jack Kramer, the right guard's out. Clark Clancy steps in for him. Cleveland made a great move, and then the turf monster got him. Maybe no gain there, but... Alexander missed him the first time around and then he stayed at it. Yeah, well, he did. He might have gotten him again. He did. He pushed him down uh, in his second try. So give him a missed tackle and a tackle on the same play. By the way, Bolden Green has had a hard time scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Only a 46% rate of success for touchdowns. Uh, you want to be up around 60 and, and you'd be pretty good. Alexander's going to take a play off. So Claire is back in now for Bolden Green. Safety blitz. 
Going toward the end zone, just too much. And it will be fourth down. Intended receiver that time, Scott Miller. Jamal Parker, the Apache uh, back for this football team, had great coverage. And I, I think uh, Deji threw that one away. So out will come Jake Suter, a junior from Toledo who under 40 is perfect, 11 for 11. He's pretty good from about 53, too. When it matters yeah. to determine your scholarship, yeah, he popped one from 53 on a uh, all-or-nothing kick in practice earlier this year. Yeah, in training camp, he got himself a scholarship out of it. So a short field goal like 28 yards is nothing for Jake Suter, who's 12 for 12 from 40 and in. Good start for the visiting Falcons. So Bowling Green takes advantage of the interception and a beautiful interception by Jeffries to put up the field goal and it's 10-0 a Bowling Green over Kent State. I want to remind you that we have number four Clemson and number 20 NC State at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, then at 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific, number 13 Virginia Tech and number 10 Miami. Both of these games are huge in the ACC and the college football playoff implications and you'll both find them streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app. And those are the newest rankings that were released a little while ago this evening. And I think for the most part, the committee's spot on. Kerrigan from the five, and that is all. Right now, Bowling Green looks faster than Kent. Tackle made there by Ballou. Yeah, Ballou had to tackle on the previous kickoff as well. He's covering hard tonight. Remember, this is a Kent offense that averages only about 10 per game. So there's a little extra urgency here. Yeah, they have to find a way to move the chains. And that's been an issue for them. You know, at the start of the year, they, they had an option offense in place under coordinator Don Treadwell. And that all went out the window when Nick Holly got injured in the third week. And so now they're just trying to cobble something together. Will Matthews is the tailback. That's Rankin. They go in motion. They fake it to him. Bolus will throw. Got an open man outside the 20-yard line. Catch made by Matthews. He's bumped out at the 22, so that's a solid seven there. Second down and three. I like the play call. A little bootleg play action on first and ten when everyone's thinking run. And now they're ahead of the chains. They can, they can open it up a little bit. Second down and three. One thing I notice about the Kent State wide receiver splits, they're awful tight. And sometimes it, it means they're only playing on a 40-yard wide field. Now Bolas will go up the middle. The umpire is going to have to be careful because he yeah, almost got clipped team. again. I'm going to give him an assist. Now he's got one solo tackle and an assist for, for our umpire tonight. Now Aaron Banks, who's starting over Armani Posey, who's out tonight, made the tackle there, number 11 for BG. There's an offside free play. flag. Yep, free play. Bowles going to take that shot into coverage, and it will be incomplete. But it should be offsides on the Falcons. No question about it. Flag down. He got him with a hard count. Offside defense, number eight. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And that's Konowalski, the outside linebacker slash defensive end, who's playing well for Bowling Green, getting good pressure. And he got a little overexcited. You can see the bottom of your screen. He had himself a, a one-step head start. That'll cost you. But I like what Bolas did. He saw that he had a freebie and just went down the field. Maybe he gets an interference penalty yeah. or maybe he gets a great catch. And he didn't do that last week. So that, that's uh, some, some growth there. No gain on that play. If second down and five coming up. The interior of the Falcon defense in there on the stop. Gus Schwederman, number 63, another veteran of Maction, a redshirt senior, an Ohio native in there. Schwederman had been playing defensive end, and because Shannon Smith is out this week, they kind of did an adjustment, and they moved him inside, and Brian Sanders got the start outside at the end position. One thing we have not really seen much of from either offense so far is a quick tempo. Bolas under some pressure there, and here comes a flag from a long way. It might get a holding call here. Rankin was the intended receiver. I think Marcus Milton hit him a little bit before the ball got there, and it's going to be uh, pass interference. That's what I saw. 
Pass interference. You are correct. Defense, number 14. Spot foul, automatic, first down. Milton had played corner up until this season, and they needed safeties, and he made the transition over to the safety spot. And that's good when you have a guy at safety who has corner skills, but he just got a little too close and hit, hit Rankin in the back before the ball arrived. Empty set. They like quarterback run in this deal. And they jet sweep it and forget about it. Raquan James was just gobbled up by Aaron Banks, number 11. That's a loss of three. And several times tonight, it just looks like Bowling Green has almost had the playbook. And, and Aaron Banks is getting the start tonight. Armani Posey, the normal starter at one of those inside linebacker spots, is out. And Banks played a lot last week and, and did a really nice job. And I think that's what uh, vaulted him into this start tonight. Bolas, a little bit of pressure, but he hangs in there. And it's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. A gain of a 12 there. Catch again made by Matthews. His second grab out of the backfield. And again, number four, Fred Garth around there for the Falcons defensively. Yeah, and there's another great example of how uh, Kent State doesn't have to substitute in order to get into an empty formation because of the receiver skills that Matthews and Rankin possess. They just put them out there and they play it. And little RPO off the jet fake and a nice little play puts Kent State in a third down and short. And yeah, Matthews only had two catches coming in, so he's doubled that total tonight. It's like a little uh, shotgun or wildcats. Yep, me. with Matthews and a weird little snap. Matthews is going to gather it, but he's going to be gathered. So they change to a wildcat formation. And it's destroyed. I, I'm not sure what happened with putoff on the snap, but that was uh, uh, Ephus pitch, if you will. So with Locke and Konowalski diagnosing the play, it'll be fourth down in a punt formation. I, I, it, it must be uh, the deal where the center, Nathan, put off, lost grip of the ball. Because otherwise you won't see a... a a high fly snap like that. It's a good kick from Adams. Milton at the 10-yard line makes the catch, so Bowling Green will have some difficult field position, but they've got the ball and they've got the lead. Tuesday night action from Kent State. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Sonic's Car Hub Classic. Pair a foot-long coney or a cheeseburger with onion rings for $2.99. And Allstate, official protector of college football fans. So a cool evening in Kent, Ohio, as you might guess. Halloween. So, uh, you know, a few folks showed up in to celebrate and catch a little action while they're at it with Ray Bentley, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew for primetime college football. Actually, this is warm action weather compared to some evenings we've had. Yeah. Andrew Clare is the tailback here. And it's not that warm. No. <laughs> They're going to hand off here to Scott Miller. And Miller is going to go roaring around the end. Really well executed play by Bowling Green. He stepped out at about the 30-yard line. Unless they're going to say he stepped out earlier, he did, apparently, said the officials at the 27 for 17 yards. Just a jet lead sweep. You're going to see uh, Andrew Clare out in front leading the way for Scott Miller, who is the fastest guy on this Bowling Green team, and you got a little taste of it right there. Well, Clare with a very nice block. And he is hit right away as Theo Majet. Just absolutely stomped him for a loss of a couple. And Majette got an assist from Marcus Moore, who ran behind him and pushed him through that gap and <laughs> shot him right into the backfield. I don't know that that was intentional, but it worked pretty well. No, Ben Needham, the defensive coordinator, might try to put that coverage in his book. Yeah, the new stunt, the old push between the gap. <laughs> well, look, the offense can push. Why can't the defense? Back to the ground again, though, and you see Claire, the ability to move in a tight space. And he did step out of bounds, and he is taken down after the whistle. 
Darrell Foster was the first tackler, and uh, Claire did get a first down. So second and 12, didn't matter. Claire is extremely quick. I mean, uh, like ridiculous quick. And I've seen him, guys had him dead to rights in the hole, and he'll put a little spin move on you or, or you know, do a little give you the leg, take it away, but he's outstanding in space. Well, he had five carries for 62 yards. And he'll get one here to give him 63. Jim Jones, 22 in the yellow, bringing him down. Bowling Green is content to run the football. Only one pass thus far. Actually, I take it back. One completion, two passes. And we have a Bowling Green player who had taken a knee and is now on all fours. And remember, as Ray Time mentioned on, earlier, their the offensive injury. line Timer. is already shorthanded. And now three, Lorenzo one, Taborn, three, number 74, is shaken up. Taborn was hurt uh, in the pregame against Michigan State in their opener this year. And now he's got another uh, little hitch in his get-along. Yeah, he needs a little help getting off the field. And now the mystery is who will Bowling Green put in there because they are so thin. Intimately familiar with it, we think. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming right now. And John Kirks, the backup right tackle, has now been inserted as the left guard to fill in for Taborn. So they've got three guys starting out of position right now on this offensive line. Doesn't seem to matter. They've been able to push this Golden Flash defense all over the field here so far early on. Cleveland is the tailback number one. Deggie on a rollout. He could run if he wanted to. Instead, he'll just throw it away. And he did so very casually. Yes. And that, that's what I'm talking about when I, when I say the kid's very composed and poised in the pocket. It, even when everything else is hectic, he's just calm and cool in there, and, and that's what they love about him most because, to be quite frank, James Morgan and Grant Lloyd, the other two Falcon quarterbacks, it's not the same picture. Uh, their, their feet uh, tend to get a little happy very quickly when the protection breaks down. They're down in nine. He hangs in, throws underneath. This is going to be a first down and into Kent State territory. Beautifully done. Great execution that time. Hunter Fulkertsma. It's actually Quentin Morris. Uh, yep, number 80, Quentin Morris. Thank you, not 88. Getting some uh, playing time. He's buried on the receiver depth chart at number three, but he's getting some reps tonight, and he took advantage of that one. And again, you know, Daggy was just outstanding, letting that thing develop and then making a good throw. It's not that hard, right? Now Cleveland running right in the middle, and he will get out to the 37-yard uh, line, a gain of five. Manny Lawrence Burke on the stop. Josh Cleveland was a late pickup, not this past June, but the previous June when Mike Jinks came in, and uh, they were kind of behind the eight ball in terms of their recruiting class, and they still had scholarships in June. And they brought him in from a junior college, and he has really grown up and developed in this program in the last year and a half. Claire back in. Fake to him. Looking one on one. Looking for Guyton. Touchdown. Wow, what a catch by Datron Guyton. His first touchdown of the season. He had a step on the DB, and he's in the end zone for six. And Bowling Green fans everywhere are standing up and cheering because. That is the part of this offense, the piece of this offense that's so vital that they have not seen. They've had a lot of trouble throwing that ball down the field. Well, they, they've got their answer in in, uh, in Deji because he threw a strike and then Guyton laid out and brought it in. Yeah, that was a fabulous, fabulous catch by Guyton. So Bowling Green has put Kent in a hole, and we still have two minutes and a second to go in this opening quarter. A 90-yard drive in three minutes and two seconds. It took eight plays. Yeah, Bowling Green has been waiting for this to happen. And they got it now with Guyton going downtown on a perfect throw from the true freshman quarterback, 
Der Jarrett Deji. 17 nothing. Falcons. Yeah, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoffs. With Ray Bentley, Dave Lamont, we've got two minutes and a second to go. And right now, Bowling Green, very sharp. This team's only won one game all year long, but they love it when it turns to midweek games. They have been one of the best midweek teams over the years that we've had on ESPN in the history of action. Yeah, last year went 3-1 and one in the month of November, and, and Coach Jake said it really helped his recruiting because, you know, people remember the last thing they saw, and they saw Bowling Green tearing it up in some action. Kerrigan from the 10-yard line. Kent desperately needs good field position, and believe it or not, that's their best so far at the 25 after the 15-yard gain. And it seems to be, Ray, the problem with the Golden Flashes is they just have a hard time sustaining drives. Yeah, too many breakdowns. I'm watching them on film, and in one play, it's it's one guy. The next play, it's a different guy. It's, it's, that's hard to fix when you have so many guys contributing in terms of errors. Uh, if it's just one guy, hey, get him right or replace him. But they kind of spread it out, and that, that really takes away your momentum and kills drives. They have 14 total yards, while the Falcons have 177 mm -hmm. in this opening quarter. Kent's only run seven plays to 18 for the Falcons. Yeah, they turned the ball over once, too. Now they get a little fancy with Rankin and a, almost a modified Statue of Liberty. They'll get a couple there. It'll be second down and eight. You give coaches a few extra days off to work, they come up with oh, new they, ideas. They will, and they, they came up with a, a version of, as you said, Dave, the Statue of Liberty, but they, they got sneaky, and they go behind the back. This quarterback, you make the fake, and then reach your back there, and, and that's up to Rankin to get the football, and he got it, but Bowling Green was kind of hip to the deal and stopped him for a gain of two. Okay, Sean Gamble now comes in, number 34. Freshman out of Cincinnati. He's the tailback. He'll stay in the block. Boldus is being pursued, and he will throw it on the run, and he will throw it away. That time he was chased by number 44, Darion Hutchins. So now third down and eight. And there was nowhere to throw that football. It was great coverage in the back end of the Bowling Green defense, and that's where they've been pretty good, in particular the corners. Cameron Jeffries has played really well. Uh, Mon Montre Gregory been outstanding, and then Clint Stevens has come in and, and made plays when people were injured. Falcons blitzing here, Ray. Do you think they're just faking it? Oh, I think they're coming. They haven't blitzed yet, so why not? Third and long, I, I think you're going to see some heat. I think you're going to see a five-yard penalty for yeah. taking too much time. Well, the officials got up to speed that time. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. And if you're just joining us, what we mean by that is the interception that Kent State threw should not have happened. There should have been a delay of game penalty. And the yeah, officials just uh, missed it by a couple of blinks of an eye. There was uh, like negative two on the play clock. So <laughs> that's not good. And they missed it. You're right. And, and <laughs> Kent State's like, why can't you uh, miss this one and, and get the other one? That's third down and 13 with a buck nine left in this opening quarter at Dix Stadium in Kent, Ohio. Bolas. Again being chased, this time he runs to his left, lobs it up, and it, I don't know if that was caught or if it hit the ground. The ruling on the field is it hit the ground. Clint Stevens trying to work the official there, and so is uh, Marcus Milton, number 14. Obviously, the guys next door, the replay officials, will take another look at this, but the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Yeah, it was pretty clear, Dave, that the ball hit the ground before, uh, after it got tipped up. When, uh, when Milton Holding. came in to try to make Defense. the interception. Number two. But you know what? Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Forget about it. What a break down. for Kent. Defensive holding on Clint Stevens. Hey, you're right. That is a huge break. Wow. Because it was punt team time. And almost interception time. So instead, it's a fresh set of downs for the Golden Flashes at the 32 yard line. And Bolus was guilty of trying to do too much on that one. Rolling to your left, throwing back to your right for a right-handed quarterback, you are asking for trouble, and he almost got it. I'm amazed when I see 
quarterbacks forced to do that as often as they see it. Some of them can do it pretty well. Yeah. And, and the other part is the defense doesn't expect it because, as you say, it doesn't usually work. So <laughs> i got to agree with you. Well, Bolas going to run left this time. He'll throw again, and he'll overthrow. Threw it away. Yeah, looks like he might have been trying to get it to Chalfante Butler, who is the tight end who was in the vicinity. It'll be second down and 10. One thing I'm noticing also is Bolas is not interested, apparently, in running. They're giving him a little bit of room to work. Yeah, Not a lot. And that surprised me because that, to me, is, is a strength of his game, his ability to, you know, his size at 6'3", 208 pounds. He can do a little bit running the football, but ha they haven't really given him that chance yet, and his scrambles have been horizontal rather than trying to get down the field. Bolas gets this one out beautifully and in time and down the sideline. And it's going to be, it should be a first down. Another catch out of the backfield for Will Matthews. He'll pick up 14 and the chains will move again. And what uh, Kent State with their, their uh, wide, not wide, their tight receiver splits, it, that draws the defense inside. And they, they get comfortable in there. And then all of a sudden they forget to cover the edges. And that's where they get stung on this play. Nice little throw by Bolas to get things rolling. Let's see, Dave. You said they have a trouble, a trouble sustaining things. Let's see. They've got a little drive going now, helped by that penalty. Can they sustain? Bolus again. Left, center, and down. There's too many Bowling Green players. It'll be a loss of three yards. Brian Sanders getting a start to that out of the D. And David Konowalski in there on the sack. And that will be the end of the opening quarter, one where Bowling Green dominated on both sides of the football. Kent. Trying to get something going here to get back in this action. Opener, 17-0, Bowling Green over Kent State. Yeah, and they've done it all different ways. Running the ball with Claire, pounding it into the end zone. It's all Falcons here after one. Second quarter about to begin here at Dick Stadium in Kent. With Bowling Green in charge, but the Golden Flashes have the football. And they dominated that opening quarter, 177 to total yards to 28. And at sometimes time of possession doesn't mean anything. It certainly doesn't when you look at those numbers. No, and negative two yards rushing for Kent State. And that kind of explains everything. And they are challenged throwing the football as we've seen. Screen and nothing. One, two, three, four. Bowling Green defenders around led by Nate Locke as Justin Rankin didn't have a chance. Yeah, you're not going to fool an all-MAC academic linebacker <laughs> and Nate Locke, and he figured second and long, it's time for that screen to come, and he jumped on it. So it's now third and a little bit longer. And I, can, I can't imagine it won't be too long before we'll get another look at a, a Golden State quarterback and Dustin Crum with the way things are going right now with Bolas. We'll, we'll see how they work this. We'll see if he can crank one deep here on third down and 14. He'll roll it right this time. Has time on the run. Good looking throw there and trying to fight for the additional yardage needed a couple of yards short but Chris White with a nifty catch and a fine throw there from Bolas. And you know what? I go Fourth for it two, Absolutely go for it. You know, you're in plus territory. You're finally maybe showing a little sign of life on offense. I think you go for this, and if you get it, great. If not, what's it going to hurt? They are 2 of 11 and fourth down tries this season. They're taking their time to make sure they get that play exactly what they want. They're waiting to see what kind of look they get from the bowling Four, game defense and they three, run out of time <laughs> two. we were almost a blast off there so we're going to take a timeout instead and maybe they rethink their their think here we'll find out when we get back 17 nothing bowling green Amazing comeback win over Penn State, J.T. Barrett, and the sixth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes battle Iowa at Kinnick Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN and available on the ESPN app. I've never been able to figure out what they're throwing at that poor guy. Yeah, 
I don't know. I was just overwhelmed by the leader hosing. I left mine at home, too. So fourth down and a couple. Bolas, quick strike, and that's going to be first down for Kent State. Their deepest penetration today, second catch on the drive for Chris White. The 34-yard line, a gain of 11. And what made that work was Kent State picked up the blitz. Bowling Green played man and across the, the board, and then they brought the house, and they didn't get there, and that allowed the opening and a nice throw to move the chains. Bolas, 7 of 10, 51 yards and an interception. Throwing this one for it. Oh, and it's just going to be out of bounds at around the five-yard line. Kerrigan had about a half a step on the defender. Yeah, that's Montre Gregory, and, and he bit a little bit on a double move. Just enough to get uh, the receiver a, a little bit of a lead, but Bolas overthrew it. So second down and 10. So to Kent State now, three out of 12 and fourth down conversions this season. For Paul Haynes. I like that they took the shot after the big first down. Now let's see if they can get uh, things geared back up. We have whistles. Hold everything. No play. Penalty flag started to the snap. I saw one of the Bowling Green defenders pointing at somebody. I don't know if that he, – he's not an official, but <laughs> he thought he saw something wrong. Offside defense by contact, number two, <laughs> five-yard penalty. Was he the one down. pointing? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think so. No, you know, it was the, the corner out on the edge. If, if, number two, Clint Stevens is the guy that they got on the infraction for making contact. So second down and five, four penalties against the Falcons so far this evening. Bolas steps into the pocket. Now he's going to take off. And he's close but short. He's going to be a yard short of the first down. Third down and a yard to go. Pressure that time. Gregory was around the quarterback when he hit the turf. That's a good decision by Bolas. There, there wasn't anywhere to go with the football. He had the time, but then he found himself a lane to escape through and almost got the first down. 11th play of the drive coming up here. Late substitution will bring Rankin on the field as James heads out. Raekwon James. It's going to be fourth down as, once again, the center of that Bowling Green defense just rises up. No chance at all. And Sanders, 58, led the parade of tacklers. Yeah, he was in there along with Aaron Banks, who blitzed from his linebacker spot. And there is a golden flash player, a receiver, who went deep on the play down inside the five-yard line. That's Johnny Woods, number 80. And that was nowhere near the football, so we didn't have a look. At least I didn't, Ray. I and didn't what see it happened either. I to was, him. I was too busy watching the, uh, the runner go backwards. So we're, while he's being taken a look at, we're looking at another fourth down and even shorter this time. It's only one yard to go as opposed to two. They went for it in the 40s, and you know what? You're down 17. Field goal's not going to really do you anything. I don't know. I, I kick a field goal here, to be honest with you. Well, fourth and one, I, I hear you there. Remember how hard it is to score. But you I want to get points, and they yeah. did talk to us about needing touchdowns. That was one of uh, Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator's keys to this game, was being able to score touchdowns in the red zone. Now, they're not quite in the red zone, but they are in a scoring area. I would... That's a tough one. I'm going for it. And I, I, I've I agree got with several you. I, reasons. Go. One is the score. Two, you're having a tough time moving the ball offensively. If you can get this and have two fourth down conversions on this drive, you really have really boosted the ego of your offense. Yes, it's a gamble, but what the heck? Yeah, you, you sold me on it now. And, of course, well, they'll bring the kicker out because yes, we both uh, pretty much what would they've say done. go. Yes, exactly. Why we're sitting here and Paul Haynes is down there. Well, my initial instinct was get get some points. Let's you did. No, and, and, and you have it on look, the board. There's a fine argument to be made for that. There's, there's yeah, I ask uh, Coach Caldwell in the Detroit Lions about getting your points. Uh, they got the a, a valuable lesson on Monday night. The bitterness. Yes. All right, from 44 for Shane Hines, who's long of the year is 48. He's a good kicker, 7 of Time 11. Out. But first, Kent State. Timeout. Second of the half. 
This will be a 30-second timeout. So they have one timeout the, remaining in this half. The play clock had not started yet. Uh, I'm not sure the, the timing of the timeout, unless they decided to, hey, we're going to go for this, and they changed their mind. That's the only thing I can think of on why they would call a timeout before the play clock even started. Time was already out. Well, you got enough warm bodies out there that you can't be sure, although the kicker breaks away from that group as if he is going to go ahead and leave the field. They're coming they back go. out with the offense. So instead, it will be George Bolas. You know what? They kind of did what we did up here. <laughs> Kick it. Oh, wait, no, wait a minute. Let's talk. Let's think about this. And Coach Haynes decides he's going to gamble. They'll run the option, and they'll have a first down. Bolas on the keeper. He'll get to the 22, a gain of four, and the drive stays alive. Tackle by Sweeterman. Yeah, and Bryce Gibbs had the key block in that one. He brings, watch the right tackle on this one, number 64. He's going to come down and make this thing work. He grabs his guy and buries him back five yards down the field, and that opened it up for Bolas. I'd run behind Bryce Gibbs for a minute. It's like he's got it going on over there. 13th play of the drive. Bolas looking for it all right here. Out of bounds. This drive has taken so long, and with a quarter break, that Jarrett Dagey was throwing on the sidelines just to stay loose, the yeah. quarterback for Bowling Green, just so he could remember how to throw a football. And it's a little chilly out tonight, so yep. you, you got to keep uh, the blood flowing. Second and ten. Got to give Fred Garth a little credit on that. On that, Actually, it was Milton, excuse me, that had really good coverage in the corner of the end zone there. Bolas on a beautiful fake, up the gut, into the end zone, touchdown, Kent State, 22 yards. They caught Bowling Green in a blitz, so they wasted the backside linebacker who would have usually filled that gap inside. The front side backer overscraped it, and that thing opened up wide, and Bolas, all he had to do was hit the gas and run straight up the field to pay dirt. A 14-play, 75-yard drive took 5 minutes and 32 seconds for Kent State, one of their best drives of the season. Nicely done. Oh, oh and they were doink the PAT. But nevertheless... That is a big victory for them. Two fourth down conversion, Trey. And you, you got to think that that's going to breathe life into this Golden Flash football team, and we might have a ball game. Nice cut up the middle, good read, and 17-6, Bowling Green. by insurance auto and home insurance for the modern world so some kent state alumni have made it big in the nfl that's antonio gates who he didn't played play football hoops. oh man at least not at kent not at kent he, he but did he, after yeah jack lambert julian edelman james harrison, harrison. Yeah. great group Got some pretty good coaches who have come out of here as yes. well. Yes, yes, they have. This will be Matt Wilcox goal line. And Wilcox has a little room to work with here. Finally tripped up outside the 35. We have flags, but the location of the flag is what's interesting. It's in the middle of the. Uh, yeah, a couple of guys. Uh, it was Wantez McCray for Golden, or for. Uh, the golden flashes and then there were a couple of bowling green guys that were mixing it up in midfield they never even got close to the action they were all uh, involved with each other and the question is who do they call it on who, who initiated it or who they do they think initiated it a lot of times the second guy mm -hmm. is the guy that During gets the hit return, personal foul hands to the place kicking team number one five yard 15 yard penalty adds to the end of the play automatic first down wow and that's so, Wantez McCray, as I said. And those are the kind of penalties that 
uh, are unnecessary. And we talked to Coach Haynes about it, and that's something they're trying to cut down. And, you know, a hands to the face. Look in the middle of the screen right there, and you see that action that's going on, and that's where McCray got his hands up into the face trying to fight off two guys. So move the football into Golden Flash's territory at the 47-yard line. Cleveland is the tailback. I haven't seen this offense in a while. They're going to come out maybe throwing in Daigie. That's just flipped grounded. it away, but that has to be grounding. There's nobody near there, and I mean no one, and I'm not sure he was out of the tackle oh, box. I don't believe he was either, and I'm not sure what the uh, referee is waiting for. It happened right in front of him. Now they're talking about it, and I'm pretty sure the flag's going to come out. I believe it should. Daigie had no one over on the right side. He was still in the tackle box, in my opinion, and he just threw it away to, to avoid a sack. I mean, that's the essence of intentional grounding. Here comes the decision, I think. A lot of discussion going on, Kirk. Yeah, there goes the flag. And that's the only possible yeah, call. I mean, it is as blatant as it gets. Intentional grounding. Offense, number two, was not completely out of the tackle box. And the ball did not reach the line of scrimmage with no eligible receiver in the area. That's loss of down at the spot of the foul. Brings up. And Third that, down. That's really the first freshman move we've seen. Correction, second down. Yeah, yeah that's, second down. cost him a down there. Yeah, so. yeah. No, you, you lose a down, you don't lose two downs. Daigie, you see there's no receiver in that area whatsoever. He was still in the inside, in, inside the tackle box. Didn't get it to the line of scrimmage. I mean, he met every, one, every criteria you need for that penalty. All right, they've got the ball settled where they want it. Now back in Falcons territory at the 46-yard line. And Diggy going to keep it, and there's just nowhere to go, and he's going to go backwards. They started this at the 47 of Kent with the penalty. Now it's... I don't think you can call that a sack. I think it's just a loss of a running play it's a back to the 40. A busted play. I think it was supposed to be speed option, and Daigie, Daigie never went. It is officially considered a sack. So now you have third down and 23. This is his freshman series right here. Yeah, gives it to Cleveland, and Cleveland will get... Back to the 48-yard line, but still a very difficult series for the Falcons. And a little more light on that Kent State sideline now as their defense holds with a little help from the Bowling Green offense. And we're going to get to see one of the best punters in the country in Joe Davidson. And the redshirt senior from Finley, Ohio, is a Ray Guy Award finalist and should be. He'll put it inside the 20. Oh, plenty of times. He'll do better than that. He's had 10 inside the 10 and only two touchbacks. Raymond James is in single safety at the 10-yard line. That's a good spot for him to be in. Left footer with a little wobble. Fair catch. Inside the 10. Well, he did it again. Davidson downs it at the 7. Hey, ABC College Football, number 4, Clemson. And number 20, NC State, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then at 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific. Number 13, Virginia Tech. And undefeated number 10, Miami. Both of these games have huge college football playoff implications and, of course, in the ACC, and both are also available on the ESPN app. Pretty much de facto championship games for the ACC divisions. It may be as exciting as that dinosaur race. Yeah, that was pretty good, actually. Actually, a Nardner photo finish. So after the punt by Davidson, we said it was down by the seven. The officials moved it back a yard to the six, so he does it again for inside the 10-yard line. Let's see what the Golden Flashes can do in terms of uh, backing up that previous drive they had, which was 14 plays, 75 yards, eight up five minutes and 32 seconds off the clock. Converted two fourth downs on their way. 
Shady. And up the gut is Dustin Crum is in a quarterback, number 14. So Bolas, who just ran in the 22-yard touchdown, you mentioned that Crum might play tonight, and he is in there at the moment. Yeah, and it looks to me that this was a scheduled thing where, all right, we're going to get him the first series in the second quarter kind of thing. And that's what they're doing with Crum right now because Bolas had his best drive, and then they took him out. So it, it had to be a planned thing. Which leads me to a question that you probably can anticipate what I'm going to ask you, but let's wait till after this play here on second and four. A high snap. The ball is fumbled. fumbled Who has it? Bowling Green. So my question is, you just had your quarterback play one of his best series all season long. Regardless of whether you you think about moving those plans, I know it's an obvious second guess, especially in light of what happened. Yeah, well, I wish you'd asked me before the play because yeah, then I'd, well, I'd sound a lot smarter in saying that I wouldn't have done it. You just got something going, and now you're going to pull the plug and put the true freshman in. And, and put him in a horrible field position as well. That's the 13th fumble recovery of the season for the Falcons. That's best in the country. And it was Jim Lautnan, excuse me, Nico Lautnan, who fell on the football but that snap there was nothing wrong with that snap no that thing hit uh D dustin crumb right right where you want it to in the hands and he just lost it and that's what a freshman quarterback will do for you bowling green up the middle to the three yard line second josh down cleveland and goal Lord. josh cleveland up the tailback give me a marker down well, the officials are having another uh confab Jim Jones on the a lot of those tonight so far. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. First down. So it'll be first and goal. Yeah, and that's a, an alignment mistake by Bowling Green. And looks like the man who was responsible for it is, is leaving the ball game. So they put Redding back in. Back to the 12-yard line. Now first and goal. Just under nine minutes in this first half with Bowling Green up by 11 and in great position here to strike. Cleveland again, hit right away. Might have gotten to the 10-yard line, but Jim Jones, 22, just secured his tackle and drove him back. Second and a goal from the 10. Nice defensive call by... Kent State, Ben Needham, the defensive coordinator, he put his defender right in the spot where the ball was coming, and Jim Jones had an easy tackle. No one even touched him as he came in off the edge. They like play action out of this sidecar eye formation. And, well, instead they're going to lose back to the 12-yard line as they tried once again with Cleveland and Josh Cunningham tossed into the turf. Number 90 in the yellow for the Golden Flashes. So now it's going to be third down and goal back at the 12. And Cunningham is, is their top interior defensive lineman. And he makes plays just like what you saw there. He was a really good high school wrestler. And he's a very strong dude. Benches 405, squats 600. He's a beast in the weight room. Dropped 40 pounds last year. He was playing in like the 320s a couple years ago, and now he's around 285, 290, and he's much more effective. Diggy looking toward the end zone. Receiver open, and he just threw it away wisely, by the way, because that receiver, as soon as I said he was open, was immediately covered, and he had Jim Jones chasing him. So second time Bowling Green gets a turnover in Kent territory and the second time they're going to have settle for three. One time they've made the field goal and this one with Jake Suter we mentioned he's 12 for 12 from 40 and under and this will be about 29. And those red zone issues continue and, yes. and really the big thing was the penalty that all of a sudden instead of first and goal at the six now you're back around the 12. Yeah we mentioned 46 percent touchdown success in the run zone. Bit of a low snap but the kick was handled perfectly Excuse by Jake Suter. So Bowling Green has had six points off of Kent State turnovers in this game. 7-11 remaining in the half on a Tuesday night action. So the field goal by Suter is second of the night. And Bowling Green leads this one 20-6 with seven minutes and 11 seconds remaining. 
Well, the big question to me, Dave, is who will Kent State bring out at quarterback? Uh, I'm bringing out Bolas. I, I never would have taken him out in the first place. But I understand they're trying to get Crumb some, some seasoning. But that wasn't the time to do it, in my opinion. Not after the drive Bolas had put together. He scored the touchdown. He, he uh, made a couple of nice plays to convert fourth downs. The first one with a pass, the next one with a run. And then they put him on the bench. Uh, it just boggles my mind. See who's going to get this opportunity, if at all. James, and he'll settle for the touchback at the 25-yard line. And I think it's going to be Bolas who's coming out here. You think? That's, oh, uh, our spies tell us that Crumb yeah. is wearing a headset. Yeah. Well, that's that's who I would put out there is, is Bolas. I never would have taken him out in the first place. And I mean, he had that uh, offense uh, found a little bit of a rhythm, Dave, and, and Bowling Green uh, helped them with some penalties, but... You got a when you got a hot hand, I would think you'd want to ride it. And he also had the touchdown run too from 22 yards out. That right. wasn't reflected in that. That's just his passing numbers. And they converted two fourth downs on that drive. This is the team that has had a very difficult time scoring. Have not scored that many touchdowns. You see Crumb's numbers from last week against Ohio. I mean, similar situation. He had well, one drop snap and then he threw a bad interception. Yeah, Bolas is in some trouble here, though. His receivers were not open. He's going to be brought down at the 21-yard line. Kyle Jr. was chasing him. He was looking for Rankin. Rankin was covered. It'll be second down and about 14. Darion Hutchins had the initial pressure. Jr. ended up making the tackle to sack. Ken offense, they get their plays through a series of signals, and they also hold up signs on the sideline to communicate the plays in. Bolas that time fighting his way through and showing some of the running that you talked about you'd seen on video already this year. And Bolas with a good run there. Nate Locke meets him after a 90-yard gain. And now you've got a manageable third and five. Yeah, and they're they're starting to run this power read play where the quarterback will fake that jet sweep and then follow a guard who's coming around uh, on a pull. And that's been open just about every time they've run it thus far. Bolas, he'll keep it. They run the option, and he continues to run the first football Bolas well. The That'll be a first down for Kent. An eight-yard pickup for Bolas before he was finally brought down. And the golden flash is moving the chains. And the, the pitch was well covered, and Bolas was looking to maybe pitch it. That's why he stopped and hesitated. He First, he beats the first guy. Now he's thinking, hey, do I have a pitch? And it's not there. And his stop-start style kind of threw off the angles of pursuit, and he got himself another one. He's got 48 rushing yards and a TD and eight attempts. I think they found something. they got to stick with it until it's no longer there. Taking a deep, deep drop. They screen at Bowling Green. And Rankin showed a sweet move because it looked like Bowling Green had that contained. And Rankin forced out it around the 46-yard line. That'll be a nine-yard pickup. Make it the 47. No, nope. yeah. yeah, it's about right. All right. They keep moving the football on you. You got do. one guy standing at the 47, <laughs> so I'm looking at him, and then they move it back to the 46. That was good execution on the screenplay, and then you saw the explosiveness that Rankin has. He hit that gas pedal and got the edge in a quick hurry. Now is a waist down. Second and long. Here's where you can take a chance and throw it down the field. Well, he does have three receivers split to his left. Instead, he'll keep it on the option and now pitch it to Rankin, who gets bumped into the Bowling Green sideline and should have a first down here. Justin Rankin, the ball carrier. And he does. Tackled there by Fred Garth. By Fred Garth. He's been around a lot of plays for this Falcon defense. And right now... The Golden Flash has found something, and it's quarterback run, whether it be option or that power read play. They've got something going with Bolas carrying the football. And the quarterback runs the hardest thing to defend, in my opinion. You have an extra blocker when the quarterback runs the football, and that becomes very advantageous. What's the best adjustment a defense can make? you got to bring another guy into the box. 
and you have to assign someone specifically to quarterback. And they run a lot of direction, and Rankin is the one who breaks free. Down the middle of the field, makes a cutback sideways, and is still going. Rankin 25, and finally knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line. A lot of movement on that play, and it moves for 32 yards before Milton made the stop. And the quarterback, George Bolas, was about 20 yards down the field trying to throw blocks for him. They're playing football now. I like the way this Kent team's going after it. A jet sweep, a nice move to bend it wide enough to get the edge by Rankin, and then here he goes, and he got has his quarterback out front trying to block. Bolus again on the keeper, and he'll get to the 11. They're going to say his knee touched a little before that. Still a solid seven-yard pickup to the 12-yard line. Banks in there on the stop for this Falcon defense. All of a sudden, we've got 335 left in this half, and Kent State threatening in the red zone. And that's that same power read play where they pull the guard. It was that time it was 74 with the right guard, Nate Warnock. He's going to lead up into the hole, and there is nobody home to take quarterback. Bolas fakes the handoff. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. He'll drop back, and he will fight for that first down. He is close. Yeah, boy, that might be a measurement-type job there. Oh, the referee right says it's it. a first down. They're going to give it to him. Good. Yep. Lautenan on the stop. The referee has already signaled first down, so it's first and goal from the nine. And again, Kent State's found something, and it's running the quarterback. And in this area of the field, I mean, that's what a lot of teams like to do anyway. And Bowling Green has to bring some another player into the box and take quarterback out of the equation. Haven't made that adjustment yet. The option. No gain that time. It was James on the carry, and Bowling Green read that. So we're seeing some very old-fashioned football going on right now here from Kent. And really, that's what they have. I mean, we've seen the passing game, and it is nothing to write home about. But they have found something with the quarterback run stuff, and now that will open up other things because Bowling Green's going to have to commit some resources to stop that. So you figure out where are those resources coming from and then attack that area. And then you got them in the mix a little bit. They did give him a yard to the eight, so it's second and goal from the eight-yard line. we would like to sneak the tight end up the seam in this situation, this area of the field, too. Looking for the end zone. There it is, and it's overthrown. Trying to work it there to Connor Brumfield, as you thought, Ray, would be the case. And now third and goal from the eight. Yeah, it looked like Brumfield was open, and the throw was just a little bit late. A lot of traffic in there to get through. Clock stop, minute 51 to go. Kent State has one timeout left. Bowling Green has all three of theirs. One out of five on third downs tonight of the Golden Flashes. Really tight here on the alignment. Rolling left. Bolas in some trouble. And down he goes. Rolling left has not been their friend tonight. And it'll be a loss of about five on the third sack of the night. That one made by Nate Locke. And we're going to get a timeout here called by Bowling Green. And Nate Locke, uh, he didn't have blitz responsibility. It was a green dog. So basically he's covering a back man-to-man. And when that guy blocks, that frees lock up, and that's what when he took off and came up and made the play. So 140 will be put on the clock, and most likely now we'll see Shane Hines, who had a PAT doink off the left post earlier tonight. Well, we talked about Bowling Green's uh, red zone issues. Kent State has their own. Scoring a touchdown on only 20% of their red zone possessions prior to this one, so it'll go below that. And that is a, a stark number. Yeah, their touchdown that they did score tonight was outside the red zone. It was a 22-yarder. This will be a 30-yard attempt. Again, the conditions here are benign. It's cold, but it is not windy. So really ideal for kickers. Urinovich is the holder, number 94. And this one splits those uprights. So Kent State trailing now 20 to 9 on the drive.
20 to 9, Bowling Green leading Kent State. I'm sure those guys in chilly weather don't mind the push ups. Keep them loose. Get that blood flowing. Keep them warm. And they're doing real push ups there. Yes. Those aren't those quick ones you see guys do. Well, no. sometimes when somebody is scoring 40 or 45 right. points, I can see where the triceps might kick out a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, so. when you're only got to do nine, you can make them good now. <laughs> Minute 36 remaining after the field goal. And we'll see what the Falcons' idea is here with two timeouts. Wilcox will get a chance here from the seven-yard line. And he'll get to the 27. So let's see. Let's take a look at uh, George Bolas and his production and his last two drives. The, both of them have led the points. He scored a touchdown himself, and then he uh, he ran the ball nine times, got 45 yards, and scored a touchdown all in the second quarter. And this is something that Bowling Green's going to have to adjust to because right now Bolas is taking care of business. Andrew Clare is the tailback. Let's see how aggressive. With 90 seconds remaining, the Falcons want to be. They give it to Claire. Oh, he's quick. He makes some <laughs> really great moves in traffic. He gains five there. He shook Jim Jones in the hole. I mean, Jones was right there in front of him, had him all lined up in his sights, and all of a sudden, you get a little sidestep from Claire. He almost moved backwards. It reminds me of the way Barry Sanders used to be able to go from full speed forward to moving backwards. 77 yards and seven carries. Now Daigie back to pass. Has protection over the middle. And it's going to be a first down to the 41-yard line. Jamal Parker taking down Claire with a clean hit. And Parker had coverage on a different receiver. and He dropped off of Wilcox when he saw the crossing route and picked up the slack and made a nice hit. Daigie, well, his line's giving him all sorts of time. He'll finally scramble and find his receiver for a short gain. That's a, a great job of continuing to work by Scott Miller. He, he had an inside breaking route. He saw his quarterback roll, and he busted it back outside, created some separation to give, himself, uh, give his quarterback someone to throw to. 22 straight passes. Miller has caught a pass in. Daigie. Over the middle, oh, that's a great throw, but it's going to be a little short of the first down to Matt Wilcox. Got to think now, uh, Bowling Green will take a timeout, and they stop the clock with 22 seconds to go, facing third down and two yards. Yeah, with this situation, Dave, you want to convert, obviously get that first down, and then I'd take a shot with, Dave, with uh, the quarterback and his ability to throw the deep ball. I want to take mine right now. Uh, and then go for it on fourth? Taking my shot right now on third down because I think a lot of people, you know, the defense might think, hey, they're just going to try to get the first because they have a timeout in their pocket. I'm going to go ahead and roll it here and see what I can do. I like the way you're thinking. I do. Now, uh, they'll... Yeah, I, I do. I like the way you're you know, thinking. Like, I, just... I, I might go for it myself. Now, you might have convinced me to make that call. But I'm still going to get the first down. Hey, you can always pooch it and the clock, and, the, you know, it's halftime. You're yeah, leading. You want to get points if you can, and they got slammed. They lose that. We have a player yeah, missing a helmet, helmet, too, by the way. And I think Kent State's going to take their final timeout as Josh Cleveland just didn't have a chance. Yeah, that's uh, and Marcus that's... Moore, 45, and others helping yeah, out. Uh, Cunningham also yep. in on that one. He, he took his the offensive lineman and jammed him back a couple yards and then came off it to make the hit. So it's fourth down, 13 Eugene seconds left. Only green. I don't know why you wouldn't punt this football. Well, quarterback might do it. Because Not the helmet came off the defensive player, it was an opportunity for 10 second runoff. Bowling Green chose to have the 10 second runoff. And Kent State has decided not to use a timeout to prevent that. Timer, please set the game clock to three seconds. Well, there you go. Now, I initially thought that Paul Haynes would come out on the field signal. to use a timeout. 
He elected not to do that, and you hear the referee explaining because of the helmet coming off of the player. That's what we were hesitating is as he got that all together. So the clock is now set to three. Yeah, and now it'll run right out. And that's it. That's the end of the half. So Bowling Green, this is the first time all season they have gone into the dressing room with the advantage. And under Mike Jinks, they have not lost in four times when they have gone into the dressing room ahead. It's halftime in Kent, Ohio, with a score of 20 to 9. And after the break, we'll send you to studio with Molly McGrath and Trevor Maddich in the college football halftime report. We're about to get the second half underway on Tuesday night action. And Bowling Green had a 17 0 lead. At the end of one quarter, but Kent State rallying with a very respectable second quarter. Changed their offensive approach, and they have made this one a game here at Dick's Stadium in Kent, Ohio. With Ray Bentley, Dave Lamont, and, you know, we had some highlights in the first half. Some interesting approaches, and the change in George Bolas's game. Yeah, and the change was in the play calling. They started running this power read play, and it was a revelation. Bolas, he takes that one right to the house, and Bowling Green has not figured out how to stop that just yet. But on the, on the other side, Jared Daigie's been pretty good. He hasn't only thrown the ball nine times, but he's been effective with it in his best throw of the night. This deep shot down the sideline, hitting his receiver for the touchdown. That's Datron Guyton. And then the, the other part, or the other piece for the Bowling Green Falcons is their freshman running back, Andrew Clare. He busted one out big time to get things rolling early on, and then he finishes that drive off, getting into the end zone, and there's basically what's going on here thus far. It'll be very interesting to see how Kent State comes out in the second half and what does Bowling Green do as you look at the numbers to try and stop that quarterback run. And these numbers were very tilted after one quarter. Kent, they, they won the second quarter in my opinion. And he will get the football with Kerrigan and Raquan James back deep. And on a night where the temperature has now gone down to 34 degrees. Signifying the official start of action. Yeah, but it's a dry cold. So it is. Good. Yes, it is. And a windless cold. So just classic Ohio football weather. Here we go. Line drive kick. And James going to watch this one roll out of the end zone. Field's kick is through the end zone for the touchback. So for Kent State team that has struggled to score... Getting even the double-digit points at times this season has been difficult for them. Let's see what their approach is going to be like in this quarter and, and beyond. Still a very manageable game, being down 11. And another key part of this is Bowling Green has picked up two turnovers, but they have only were able to get field goals out of it. And both times, heck, one time at the 7-yard line, they recovered a fumble and could not punch it in. The other time, they got it down about the 22 and could not punch it in. Yeah, Bowling Green has won the field position battle, but here we go. And Matthews gets ripping down the middle of the field into Bowling Green territory. Or let's see if they put him right at the 50-yard line. Bottom line is it took two defenders to bring him down. It's right on the 50, and it's a first down, 25-yard run. Watch the center, 54, Nate put off. He takes the linebacker lock and gets him totally out of the play, and that opened things up for Matthews. And they stay on the ground with the quarterback, and Bolas will get a couple that time of the 48 now into Falcon territory. And I see a little bit of an adjustment already by this uh, Bowling Green defense, Dave. They, they slanted the line uh, towards the direction of the play that time, and that brought some more people to where the quarterback will show up on the power replay. A little reverse, a little flea flicker. flicker. Bolas. And he overshot the receiver. The defensive back, Jeffries, was not fooled. Tried to get it to Chris White, but number 18, Jeffries, wasn't biting and did a very good job to hold his ground that time. So it'll be third down and eight. But Bolas had number 11, Justin Rankin, wide open. You're going to see Rankin on the, on the lower part of the screen. There's nobody near him. But he didn't look that way, and he ends up throwing it the other way. He missed a great opportunity there. And they are 0 for 2 now in deep shots are the golden flashes. 
Well, they empty the backfield. They have brought people in motion frequently. They don't do it this time. Bolus, yes, sir. And bam. That's what happens when you run right into a fence. That's that's the wow. Lautenen and Garth in and there. And that and was just, Garth you're running, the and then that's it. Yeah, <laughs> you're done. You hit the wall, and the wall was Fred Garth, who led the Falcons with eight tackles in the first half. That's number nine. And that was a good one. I mean, he closed and covered a lot of ground. A lot of spin on this punt. And they can't get it out of the end zone. That was so close. So it'll be a touchback and bowling green ball at the 20-yard line. If the second man in doesn't touch it, they might have a, a nice play. So a promising start for Kent State. But they cannot sustain it. We'll get our first look at the Falcons and offense in this half. College football, ABC Saturday. This is a really sweet doubleheader. Number four, Clemson. Number 20, NC State at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then at 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific. How about Virginia Tech taking on undefeated Miami, ranked number 10 in the playoff poll. Both these games have big-time ACC and CFP implications, and you find them on the ESPN app. You'll find this play as well as we see a tunnel screen stop for a yard. T.O. Redding have not called his name much tonight. He is brought down after a very short game. And this Bowling Green offense has gone dormant. Uh, they had 177 yards, Dave, in that first quarter. Just 17 yards in the second quarter on three possessions. And they need to do something to crank this thing back up. And they go to the ground, and the Kent defense charged up. That's going to be a gain of a yard there. Third down and eight, little throw down after the play. Jim Jones has played inspired, number 22 for the Golden Flashes. Look down, it'll be third down, and they're going to say seven now. Yeah, and Kent State's got a little swagger to them right now. They're, they're feeling it pretty good. They, they, defensively, they have shut this group down since that first quarter. And, and they're, they're kind of being a little nasty about it, too which you love. Wow, oh, I, I don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure up the middle here. Dagey's going to hang in. He's got his receiver coming back to make the catch, but I think the catch, well, hold on. I think he got the foot in, Dave. Yep, he did. That's a spectacular catch by Redding. And a great throw. And how Redding had the wherewithal to get that foot down is amazing to me because he clearly did. Going up along the sidelines, makes the catch, gets hit, and somehow he gets that right foot in before he goes out of bounds. That's a heck of a throw and a great catch. The ruling on the previous play of a catch is under They're going to look at review. it upstairs. And I don't blame the replay official for wanting another look at it. That's Jerry Bram. But we had a great look that showed the foot landed before he went out of bounds. That is a, it could be an SC top 10 catch right there. It may well be. Check out the right foot. That's the one that's going to come down, still in bounds. And then there's, he hangs on to the ball and completes the process of the catch. That to me, looks like a good one to me. And if so, what a jolt for the Falcons. What a beautiful throw you mentioned by Jarrett Dagey. We had a chance to talk to his brother, who's an assistant coach. And again, if you're a football fan, the name Seth Dagey may ring a bell. He played for the Red Raiders at that position, and now he's a wide receivers coach for BG. Yeah, he originally he was up uh, in Saskatoon, and he got cut by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And he said, decided, all right, I'm going to get a real job. He got a job with his father-in-law, wanted to make some real money. And he said he did it for six months, and all he could think about was ball. So he knew he had to get back into it. And he called an old buddy of his, Kevin Kilmer, who's the offensive co-offensive coordinator for Bowling Green. He was a GA, a graduate assistant, when Seth was playing for Texas Tech. And he kind of got the word out, I'm, I'm interested in coming back into football. And Kilmer brought him in After with, with Coach review, Jinks. The ruling the on the field history. is confirmed. Completed catch for first down. And he claimed he had nothing to do with the recruiting of his younger brother. Uh, Jarrett, who is nine years his junior, and he said uh, they kind of had an eye on him, and finally uh, Kevin Kilmer says, well, when are we going to offer your brother? And Seth says, that'd be a great idea. And his brother right now is two for two 
for 71 yards and a touchdown on deep throws. And he's going to hang on to it here and slide safely. First time we've seen him run the football. They do it occasionally. Uh, he's capable, but they just don't want to get him hurt. They, right. I mean, they've had issues already, already and yep. he's just 18 years old. He's, he, hasn't, he doesn't have the, a man's strength yet. He hasn't spent any time in their off-season program getting his body built up, so they, they want to be careful with him. Gain seven on that one, though. Boy, that pass may change the entire complexion of this half. And that's a big part of this offense. There's an RPO that they don't do very often. And a lot of sweet moves by Redding, who has been much more a part of the game plan in this half. He gets it out to the 26, and a chain mover for Bowling Green. Redding had a knee sprain a few weeks ago, and he's just finally getting back to being himself. Had a huge game against Miami. Eight catches, 197 yards, and two touchdowns in the Bowling Green's only win this year. In fact, both these teams have one win this year, and both of them beat Miami of Ohio. And off here, Cleveland. And he got one hard-earned yard. You saw several defenders just jump on his back. Devontae Lee, number three, and he had help. And there was a flag late. Yep. Lawrence Burke went there as well. little chippiness. These guys want the anniversary trophy back at their campus. Yeah, let's take a moment to explain that because the anniversary trophy was birthed years ago. These schools were in the born around 1910, both of them. Right. They have a lot in common. Now, they're not true hatred rivals. I mean, for Bowling Green, that's Toledo. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 28, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, Number one, those penalties were offset. Down counts, second down. And that is the first. This is the first unsportsmanlike conduct yep. for both of those players. Yeah. So anyway, they give out a trophy called the Anniversary Trophy as we take a look at the pushing and shoving that ensued afterwards. And it was given out every year to the winner of the game. And then the trophy disappeared. Mysteriously. Just gone. For 20 years. Yes. I think the last it was, time, it was 97, the yes. last time they awarded it. You know when they found it? Well, you know. Yeah. They found it yesterday, <laughs> somewhere in the bowels of Dick's Stadium. There's more on this in a moment. First, an empty backfield, emptying for Daigie, and he is dumped. Sack made by John Cunningham, who's having a tremendous game. And just the bottom line, finish up the thought on this, is the trophy. The back game in play. Is back in play, and it belongs on the Bowling Green sideline because they won last year's game. So there you there go. Is. That's the hardware that they're playing for. Uh, to go back to football, Cunningham split a double team to get that sack. That was... Uh, all strength, which he is a very strong hombre. He's played really well tonight. Now, daigie has got all day here at the moment, but he can't find anybody open. That pocket's going to give out here pretty soon. Now, we're going to have an interception, but there's also going to be a flag here against Kent. The interception by Foster, he makes a great run back before he is brought down. Another flag comes in. I've got, one, I've got four flags, five flags, and a helmet. Here's what's going to happen. I think one of the penalties is going to be for participating after the helmet came off. Yes, That's you, one of them. you got to stop. You have to stop immediately, and you can see. That's Majette. Yeah, the Majette hat. was the one guilty of that. Now, these other flags, I can't account for, especially the last one that came in. That was an ill-advised throw, without question, from uh, Daigie. I mean, that, that one he should have just thrown up into the, into the cheap seats. And we, just to explain, this is a relatively new rule about the helmet coming off. That's when so that, hard to it's, put your brakes on. How do you do that? It's your instinct is to play on no oh, matter absolutely. what. But as a safety issue, the rule is once your helmet comes off, and it, no matter what is going on on the field, you have to take yourself out of the play. Mm. You might as well just sit down. And I've seen this call hard to about do. a couple times a month. You'll see this call come up. And, you, and it's a safety issue, of course. Remember a few years back when helmets were flying off at a record pace? Yes. Uh, when they made that rule, they stopped coming off, guys. Uh, I wonder what that was all about. All right, here are all the calls. I want to Five million interception. Holding. Defense. Ooh. Number seven. Also, personal foul. 
defense, number 92, participating after his helmet came off. The penalty for number 92's foul will be 15 yards in the previous spot and will be automatic first down. So erase the interception. Bowling Green gets a huge break. And that's the, a, a free lesson for Jared Dagey. The Kent sideline is pretty hot about these calls. Let's see so if we can see the, the holding. Just at the end, we see the interception. But the flag had already come out. So they had already called. I think it was be on the receiver behind the intended receiver. And yeah, look at man. 92. He yeah, don't care. But yet, he, it's just going to play he, football. He, he, I love it. I don't love that rule, but I understand it. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could uh, comply with it if I were playing still. And that's the penalty that was taken. So it's going to be first down the 16-yard line after all that. Take a shot here. Sure. Go to your tight end in the end zone, but he's in a sort of an H-back position here. They go on the ground, and Cleveland uh, playing off of that block. Gets to about the 11 yard line, gain of fall. Ryan Hunter, the left tackle for Bowling Green, also had a great block. I, he's one of the best linemen in, in terms of using his hands I've seen on film all year. Uh, he just does a great job, and he's he's uh, cleared out some holes for Josh Cleveland tonight. Coming up to the nine-minute mark in this third quarter. We've had no points put on the board yet since halftime, but here's Bowling Green in the red zone where they've struggled. And the quarterback's going to keep it. Daigie at the five. Daigie flag coming down. He's going to be stopped just short of the goal line. But there's a flag at around the eight-yard line. Yeah, I think they're going to get Redding for holding. He was maintaining his block out there on the edge. Holding. Offense. Number nine. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat. Second down. And it's hard to do when your quarterback's going one way and then the other. And that defender's going to mirror him. And, that, and when you're blocking him, you're like, whoa, don't go that way. And then he comes the other way. you got to grab him. And it's almost instinctual. There's the hold on, on Redding. It happened actually a little bit prior to where uh, we picked up the, the replay. And you saw Daigie actually lost the football at the end of that game. Yep, at the very, very end of it now. We're going to see Claire, number 32, in the tailback position. The football back at the 17-yard line. Dino Babers is... Uh, he, he didn't. He called plays last year. He wasn't doing it much this year, but he's doing it tonight with his young quarterback. Now a screen pass. Claire, he's got some room to run. One man to beat. He beats him, and it's going to be stopped very close to the mark. Gain of about a dozen there. Set up a nice screen play and uh, had a good block from the center. Caleb Bright leading the way. And I don't think the first man has tackled Andrew Clare all night. No, nope. and he just missed that first down, Ray. It's third and very, very short. They're going to bring in an extra big body here, and, and now here comes a jumbo package for the Golden Flashes. Yeah, they bring in a new uh, set of defensive linemen to hunker down and try to stop what would probably be a, a run up the middle between the tackles given the down and distance situation. This is where the tight end slips off the line into the end zone uncovered. They do have a pop pass in their repertoire. Well, we're going to get a timeout before we get anything else. Yeah, they were running timeout. out of time on the play clock. Bowling Green. Their first of the half. They have two remaining. This will be and the clock is 19 in this quarter. And so we're watching once again. This is a big play here for the Falcons. Not just for the obvious reasons, but because of their less than stellar effort so far this season performing in the red zone with less than 50 percent conversions for touchdowns yeah that's been a, a huge issue for them uh, tonight as well and but throughout the season and they, they were able to move up and down the field pretty much between the 20s and they get inside there and, and all of a sudden things don't go their way It's the 10th play of the drive coming up. They've gone 73 yards in over five minutes. Been aided by some penalties, in particular the defensive holding that wiped out the interception. And is this two-down territory if they don't make it is the other issue to think about. It's an easy field goal. Yeah, I think you kick it to put the lead up to 14, but we'll see if that's even an issue. It is. Yes, it is going to be an issue. Incomplete pass. Jamal Parker blitzing off the edge, got his hands up and knocked that thing away. And they did try to sneak 
uh, sneak someone out to the flat, but Parker batted it down, and now you have a fourth down. And I'm going to defer to you, Dave. What, what do you do here? <laughs> uh, well, they're lining up very quickly. As if they are going to go yeah, for it. And they'll do a push. They'll push the quarterback on the sneak. And that's exactly what's going on. You see Claire with the push, and that is going to work. To the five, and that'll be a first down. Now, uh, if you want to go by the letter of the law, that's illegal to, to push a running back. It's not called since the Bush push. And they just kind of look the other way. I don't know why they won't just change the rule. If, if, the, if you have a rule, why don't you enforce it? It doesn't make any sense. So first and goal, five-yard line. And most teams take advantage of it now, and they actually have a, the scheme is to push the quarterback, which is illegal. On the ground. A lot of pushing going on in there and down. The one official coming in from the far side says the ball carrier is down shy of the goal line. Yeah, he was. The knees were down. He tried to extend the ball out to break the plane. And that's when it came out. He, the knees were already down. So you see second down. Here comes the push play again, probably. In a four second down, go to go for the one. And you can see his knees will be down as he extends that ball out. Knee down, still had it. And yep. in fact, no question. He was knocked out by a player after he was clearly down. Yeah, alert job there by the officials. Yeah, they may do it again. You're right, because there's Diggy under center. Yeah, it worked the first time. There he goes. He's got Cleveland pushing him, and he's in for the touchdown. Amazing to me. He's in for the touchdown. One yard so 7.03 to, to go. Diggie. Bowling Green has a chance to make it their two. largest lead of the night, 18 points. That was a really nice drive, and they dodged a couple bullets on the way, but they kept at it, and they, they were able to move the football again. I mean, when you control it for 6 minutes and 20 seconds and cover 80 yards and 14 plays, that's a pretty good drive, regardless of any other caveats. The ruling on the previous play of a touchdown is under further review. Well, just wait a second here. Replay official wants some extra time with that. Every play is reviewed. Some get extra attention. Yeah, if they're not satisfied immediately, then they'll stop it just to make sure. And now the flag goes out on the field. I'm not sure. Somebody said something, and they're going to get popped for that. Here's another look at the play. I, I don't see why. I mean, that clearly to me is a touchdown. Well, let's see what the other thing is, too. I can see the... Yeah, it was in the midst of the Kent huddle. Yep. And somebody said something they ought After not to. After further review, ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. They can confirm nor deny it. Now let's see what else we have. And this penalty, if it's a, a post-play penalty, which it is, will be reinforced. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 90. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That is number 90's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Sounds like uh, John Cunningham told him how he really felt, and uh, it cost him. So that means the kickoff will come from the 50 yard line, essentially guaranteeing a touchback. Most of the time, the kickers just blast it as far as they can, and not run the risk of a return. Every once in a while, somebody will try to point a kick in a direction and cover it, but we'll see what the Bowling Green strategy is as they try to try to make this one 27-9. to nine. Low snap. Very well handled by the holder. And that's Joe Davidson, the punter. Did an excellent job with that skippy snap. So Bowling Green now 27-9. to And this drive, really the big play on it, was this great catch along the sideline by Redding, getting that foot in. That kept them going. Bowling Green, the offense awakes 27-9. to ESPN College Football, brought to you by Allstate. Official protector of college football fans. And down the stretch they come. And much like the Super Bowl, when the left shark was the big winner in the Katy Perry halftime show a couple of years ago, the left dinosaur 
picked up the victory here in Kent, Ohio at Dick Stadium. With Ray Bentley, Dave Lamont, 27-9, Bowling Green, Kent State, Tuesday night action. A couple of squads trying to pick up what's been a difficult season at times for them. Bowling Green just the one win, and Kent with two. Dave, i got to clean something up. They changed the rule in college football this year where now it's just like in the NFL. You can push the runner from behind. So uh, and look at this is, speed on that. Instead of blasting deep, they go for a placement, and that's going to work out very well for Bowling Green. They had an option to just go ahead and pelt it into the stands, and they don't do it. Instead, they play for placement, and it worked out extremely well to about the 16 or 17-yard line. And you're starting to notice some pushing and shoving after plays now between yeah, these two schools. and it's kind of been a thing that's been building throughout. And you had a couple little, uh, you know, little, uh, battles here and there, and now it's picked up in intensity. Bowers checking the, the list of plays he has on his, on his belt on a little thing there. See what he comes up with. Gonna roll right here. Take a deep, deep drop, and oh, that's a nice completion. Is he in bounds? It looked like it. Did he finish with the football? No, the ball ended up on the ground. Yep, it is incomplete. Kind of lost Rankin there in the wash. The Bowling Green sideline, but it'll be second down and ten. Yeah, he was up into the bench area. Second down and ten. You see, that's a nice job of Bolas hanging in there. And had Rankin been able to catch the football, he would it would have been a legal catch. He had the foot down. Bolas will keep it, and it is noticeably different how Bowling Green is defending that play. Short gain there brings up third and long. Tackled by Lopman. Yeah, they, they continue to slant their inside defensive tackles into the middle there and that kind of gums things up and that, that's the adjustment they made and that seems to have stopped that power replay. I think the uh, linebackers are uh, infinitely more aware of the quarterback keeping it too. Pitch to Rankin. And can he beat this defense? No, he can't. Bowling Green is swarming on the run attack here, and it's going to be a gain of four, but well short of the first down, and Kent State will have to punt. Nate Locke, who had five tackles for a loss in the first half, amazing. in there again. He's having a tremendous game for BG. That's his eighth tackle of the night. And as you mentioned, many of them behind the line of scrimmage. Little wobble on that punt. Milton brought down immediately. Great coverage at the 35-yard line. 5.40 to go in this third quarter. Bowling Green in position to take real command if they can move the football on their next drive. Fresh off that a remarkable comeback win over Penn State, J.T. Barrett and sixth-ranked Ohio State. Well, Battle Iowa at historic Kinnick Stadium, Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. Available, of course, on the ESPN app, as is our game tonight. And all action. Big one tomorrow night in Kalamazoo. As the MAC rounds into form, we get ready for the MAC championship game. We move to a Saturday this year. Yeah, that'll be cool. Noon at Ford Fieldhouse. And MAC basketball about to get underway here very, very shortly. So from the 35-yard line, taking a look at the freshman, Jarrett Dagey. As he had to wait for the dance team to finish. And they were doing Thriller, so you well, had to, it had takes to, extra had time to respect for that. that. Yes, you do. Donovan Wilson now in there, number 45 at the tailback position. He had a really big game against Kent last year. And well, rips and off a big run to start things this time. In case they forgot about it. Yeah, him. right. Nine yards, we'll remember, as Manny Lawrence Burke is in there on the stop. And we sat down with Kevin Kilmer and, and Andy Patron, the co-offensive coordinators, and they said they need Wilson to rise up and play because he's that big back. They've got the little scat guys in Cleveland and Claire, but they need somebody who can pound, in particular in the red zone. And Wilson is the guy with that opportunity. No, not now. He's not because Claire is back in. We may see Wilson again. 
Pitch to Claire. First block didn't work. Claire is going to make it happen by switching oh directions. Got a key block to the 40. 30. Playing off of another block. Might have stepped out of the 25-yard line. Either way, what a spectacular run for 33 yards by Andrew Clare. Uh, he was uh, averaging 11 per carry on the night prior to that one. That's going to go up, and he averages 7.7 his last few games and 7.2 on the year. And uh, this, I, I said uh, he makes the first man miss. He made the first three miss right there in his own backfield. Uh, that's just an amazing run. Eight carries now for 111 yards for Andrew Clare. Average bumped up to almost 14 per carry. Now Diggy going for the corner of the end zone for the kill shot. Did he hang on to that? What, what a, a catch. catch. Unbelievable grab by Redding. That's a one-hand reach out stab. And then he got his foot down. And is there a flag on out on the field? I think they got Two roughing on the quarterback holding. after the play. We're not holding. This play Number 77, coming back. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. And remember, they are working with a patchwork offensive line tonight. That is a backup at John Kurtz, who has been forced into action this evening. So scratch the touchdown. In the meantime, the Toledo training staff is now taking a look. Excuse me, the Kent State training staff is taking a look at one of their athletes who's shaken up on the play. Alex Hogue, number 53. This was a catch. My goodness, it's a shame it doesn't count. Yeah, it is, because this is worth watching again and again and again. I mean, that's an extended one-hand grab, got the foot inside. I mean, that was good on Sundays. And, and Daigie hung in there, took a shot at the end of the play. But they didn't call that. They well should have. I mean, that's uh, unfortunately the official had already thrown his flag at the holding. Well, then you and throw I don't your, think he saw it. Yeah, throw your hat. Yeah, you but throw something else. If I you think have he two was. Flags. I think he was. It was so late that he quit looking at the quarterback. But that should have been uh, a roughing the passer without question. You know what though? That's the central judge. And the referee is back there too. He could have seen that. A referee is the one who very often protects the quarterback. So after all of that, it's first down and 20. Back to the ground we go, and good hit just inside the 25-yard line on Cleveland. Cleveland, they say, has the fastest 10-yard time on this entire Bowling Green team. He gets out of the gates that quick, and, and he didn't have that prior to coming here, but they, they said Billy Yates, the strength and conditioning co uh, coach for the Falcons, were able to drag, they were able to drag that out of him. That's why they can't wait to get Andrew Clare into that offseason program and see what they can do in developing him. Cleveland with 55 yards, stays in the block this time, picked up a blitz. Daigie will toss it and complete it, and they're going to be about three yards short of the first down. The catch made there by Redding coming over the middle. And you know what? You saw Cleveland that time pick up a blitzing Jim Jones and did a great job. Now it's going to be third down and a very manageable distance of about four. Yeah, and Cleveland put a whack on Jones. Now, Josh Cleveland weighs 175 pounds. Jones is bringing 232 to the party. And I got to give that round to Josh Cleveland. Yeah, he hung in there. Coming up to the three-minute mark as both teams substituting heavily here. Play clock at 10, and the, cent the center judge is standing over the football. Now down to yeah, six. They might have to push it back up. Because Five, two, got it just in time. And I mean just in time. Daigie, good-looking throw there. That's going to be a first down and more. Daigie's arm is not fully Daigie developed yet, but on throws Scott like Miller. that where he hit Scott Miller on the crossing route, or the out route, I should say, that was a dime. I mean, he got that thing out of his hand and boom, got it there in a hurry. And Scott Miller takes it down to the five-yard line. So once again, here's Bowling Green in the red zone. First and five. And that's Seth Daigie on the sideline. He's the receiver's coach. He's getting those guys off the field. Handoff. And Cleveland tossed down in the end zone for a touchdown for the Falcons. 
He got a, an assist from his right tackle, Austin Labus. Wasn't quite a bush push, but it was a help. So in the red zone tonight, Ray, five trips. Five times they have scored three touchdowns, so that's 60%. That's better oh, than the 46%, so they may bump it up to 50-50 by the end of the night and two field goals. So they are perfect in the red zone. And that is a great sign for this offense, uh, the ability to complete long passes, which they've done with, with Daigie, and then the ability to, to finish drives, especially with touchdowns. So now the largest lead of the night, 34-9 to for Bowling Green. They try to pick up their second win in the MAC East. They have ruled this division over the past few years. They're trying to get the 2-3 and three in conference play. There is our score and time. 2.15 remaining in this Tuesday night action. And Bowling Green has grabbed this one by the throat, trying to go to 2-3 and three on the season in conference play. Coach Paul Haynes, who had a, a scary deal this past summer, was diagnosed with prostate cancer, had surgery on August 27th. Right before they had to play Clemson in Death Valley. And he missed a couple of weeks, but was able to recover nicely, and, and he's back full speed to normal. So he, he calls himself very blessed. Yeah, he just had a checkup recently as we watched the kickoff return here from Raquan James. And just to follow up on that, he took a blood test that ended up saving his life. Yeah, he, back in June. In June, there had been an occurrence of this in his family. And he realized, you know what, I better get checked. And he was going to wait until he was 50. He's 48 now. If he had waited two more years, we don't know what would have happened. So he, I guess the message from all of us, also to all of you men, is early detection. And it was just a blood test. Right. And it most likely saved his life. And he says right now he is cancer-free. So we're all delighted about that. So that's the little message in there uh, from Paul Haynes and from anybody else about early detection for these kinds of things, and it's very, very simple. So football sometimes uh, isn't the second. most important yeah, thing. You're right. At the moment it is to him, but a few months ago it probably wasn't. Now, Bolas down the middle, and that's a nice catch by Justin Rankin, and Rankin will get out to the 36-yard line. Rankin, they've wide, lined up as a wide receiver on that. He lines up all over the place, and he is able to, I guess, keep this Kent offense going because they don't have to change personnel groups. He can play receiver, slot. I mean, they put him wherever they want, and he's productive uh, in those situations. And it really puts the defense in a bind. And talking with the defensive coordinator, he said that we, had to, we have to be creative in our base package because of him. It's Perry Eliano who uh, shared that with us. And Rankin coming back to that football makes a terrific catch and a first down, a gain to the 48-yard line of 11 yards. So back-to-back -back first downs on a boldest to Rankin connection. And Kent's cranking up the tempo a little bit. They've got a little rhythm going. Got a couple pass completions in a row. You see the work that Rankin's done tonight. Well, they've gotten out of the quarterback run game on this little drive here because that wasn't working anymore. Well, they, they added another man to the box. The safety came in, too. It's another part of it. Into double coverage, coming back, and the ball is incomplete. And it hit the receiver, Kerrigan, right in the hands. Yep. But he kind of lost uh, sight of it at the last second because Fred Garth showed up. So they've taken three deep shots. They have not hit on any of them. The ball may be a touch underthrown, but still hit him in the hands. Yeah, that's got to be caught. I mean, they were, they're were 0 for 3 on deep shots. They had a perfect opportunity. Pretty well thrown ball by Bolas, but just a drop. And those are the things that continue to kill you if you can't state. And it's not just one guy. They share those mistakes. Slant pattern broken up. Trying to get it in one more time to Rankin. It's really nice coverage. Brandon Harris broke it up, number 19, a junior from East Cleveland. He had 10 tackles in their recent game against a tough Northern Illinois side. And that's hard to do when you get that guy inside position, which Harris did. Then you got to get around or through his body somehow to get to the ball, and he did it perfectly without causing any interference. One out of eight third downs, and here's third and ten. 
Empty set for George Bolas, the junior from Aurora, Ohio. He's going to take off, draw. and he's got plenty of room here. Played nicely off the block. And, oh, he put the ball down, and was he down already? Is the issue. The line judge has not indicated whether he was down or not. Well, that almost looked, looked like a fumble to me, back. but yeah, he got the, it back. You could hear the yelling. Clint Stevens forced it out of his hands, but it looks like the first down was already called and achieved, so no fumble here. That was a nice play call. They had two offensive linemen way downfield uh, making blocks, and, yeah, that ball came out, and Bolas was fortunate to get back on top of it. Might have been down, but either way, it is a first down 38-yard line. Going to take a shot one-on-one, -on -one, coming back to the ball, and that one is going to be incomplete also. And that's another drop uh, on another deep shot. I mean, I, granted, it wasn't a great throw to Dante Ross, but he slowed down, adjusted to the ball, got it in his hands, and drops it. That's two drop deep th shots in the last couple of plays. Second down, 10. It's a cold night here, but not windy. I'm looking at the American flag across the way, and it is quiet. Temperature in the low 30s. Bolas being chased. In some trouble. He'll get it off. It'll be incomplete. Third and 10 coming up. A lot of pressure that time. That same, Coming from David Konowalski. Yeah, that same bootleg type play we've seen several times, and they've had some success with it. And that time, Bowling Green was all over the coverage down the field, nowhere to throw the football with any success. Boy, he had time that time and a beautifully calm throw to Justin Rankin. And the sophomore beginning to rack up some numbers at that jack-of-all-trades position he plays for Kent. First down. Waning seconds of this third quarter down to 14. Clock is running. Down to seven. No real speed here to get this play off before the end of the quarter. And they do not. Didn't quite make it. So three quarters in the That's books. The of the third quarter. Bowling Green putting up two touchdowns against Kent State, who did not score in the third. So at the moment, the Falcons have this one by 25. Fourth quarter about to begin with Bowling Green uh, having the run of play at the moment, 34 to nine on a cool evening in Kent, Ohio, at Dix Stadium with Ray Bentley, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew. With Tuesday night action kicking off that three-week run that we love so much. First down and ten from the Bowling Green 26. Bolas got tripped, and that'll be a sack and a loss back to the 30-yard line of four. Yeah, I'm not sure who they'll give that sack to. Schwederman was the first one to touch him. I'd say he'd be a, a likely candidate. Might have tripped over his own lineman's ankle there. That's the fourth sack credited to the BG defense tonight. Yeah, you be the judge. Yeah, I, I, it looked like he actually it looked like his foot got stepped on by Butler in the course of pass protection. That's why Schwederman was running over there so quickly yes, to grab the credit for one. that. Meantime, he may get one here. No, flag comes in as Bolas escapes the collapsing pocket. He'll be down to the 21-yard line, but Bolas on the keeper penalty flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like one of the inside guys got tackled for Bowling Green. Personal foul. 
Hands to the face. Defense, Ooh. number eight. Half distance to the goal line from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Surprising, but they get Konowalski with an illegal hand to the face. So yeah. there you go, and that's going to be a first down to keep the drive alive. Right, extending this thing, and Kent keeps keeps fighting. And that, that's one thing that, that uh, the sense I got from Coach Haynes is, and he talked about it, that our way, hey, we don't care what the record is. We don't care what the, sto the score is. We're going to fight with everything we got, all every ounce of effort we can give you till the end. And uh, they have bought into that. And, uh, yeah, they're not real good right now, but they are fighting hard and working at it still. So they get it over the 11-yard line. Boldus will keep it, and touchdown saving tackle at around the three. Boldus for the keeper. And that was Konowalski there. Making up for the, uh, <laughs> the hands to the face makes a touchdown saving tackle. So second down. About two from the three. No substitutions here for Bowling Green. We've neither we've seen very little of the high pace tempo. The days of Falcon fast, for example, when Bowling Green has the ball, that's gone now. Yeah, that that went away when when Mike Jinks got cold. <laughs> he realized that <laughs> up here in this area, you need to run the football, especially when November comes rolling around. Now direct snap to Matthews. And he is in, calling his own number on the Wildcat. Matthews punches across the score for Kent State. Nice block by Connor Shinsky. The guard pulled around and blocked the contained man, creating the room for Matthews to get up inside. See the puller come around. He kicks out the edge, cut inside. Nice run there and a nice execution and an excellent drive by the Kent State Golden Flashes. Yeah, you see the numbers, 11 plays, 81 yards in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. And they threw the ball around the yard a little bit, not just quarterback run stuff. Well, it started with Justin Rankin. He got hot early in that drive. Boldus and Rankin had a good relationship there. But they took Boldus off the field and allowed Will Matthews to finish this off. And he took care of business, and Kent State answers. They'll, they'll keep fighting. No doubt about that. Kent State has only scored in the fourth quarter one of the game this season. That was versus Howard. They have scored tonight. That's not been a problem for Ohio State as they come on to Iowa now to take on the Hawkeyes at Kinnick Stadium. 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app. So if you're in a car now, your passenger in a car, not the driver, but your passenger, no more excuses. Whip out the app and watch a little football. Not the driver, though. Nope. All right. Wilcox awaits the kick. He'll take it to one yard line. And he's got some room to work here. 45-50, Wilcox cuts back, and he'll finally get slowed down. What a great run back for Wilcox all the way to the 39 or 38-yard line. They're going to mark him down into Kent State territory. That's about a 62-yard return. Really nice return. And I tell you, the uh, touchdown-saving tackle was by Marcus Elliott, who had another tackle earlier on a kickoff, but he saves him here. And the cutback, it looked like he might bust it behind the whole rest of the Kent State uh, team that was following, but Elliott did a nice job of putting on the brakes and making the hit. 61 yards on the kickoff return for the green ball, first and 10. So yep. just when things start to go a little bit better for Kent State, Bowling Green gashes them with a long kickoff return and gives them a short field. Diggy. Under pressure, throws back the other way. Boy, this is really well done. Volkersma down to the 22-yard line. The big tight end out of Grand Rapids, brought down by Jones. And they do a little delay sneak by Volkersma, the tight end. He's on the right side initially, and he actually goes to his right to block. And then after the block for a second or two, he takes off, and uh, that area he got to was totally voided by any Kent State defender. 
Nice little play. They love to get that ball to Volkertsma when they get past the 50 into plus territory. And if the closer they get to the goal line, the more he comes in play as a receiver. That's just his fifth catch on the year. Out of his first four catches, two of them were touchdowns. Wilson now, the tailback, number 45. He'll get the carry, and the big guy rumbles inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. He is a solidly put-together 6'1", 222. He looks bigger than that. And he'll play bigger than that at times, too. And the other thing, though, is he's got en enough speed to bust the thing outside if it's there. And he's got the vision. He's a pretty good back. Georgia Tech transfer. Fifth-year senior. Trying to make the most of his last year here. Bowling Green in no hurry to get this play in, although they might want to step it up a little bit. We're down to five on the play clock. There's the clap. There's the snap. There's the handoff, and there is the first down, and look at him go inside the 10. Donovan Wilson gets it down to the seven, first and goal, a solid eight. And this is the kind of running I saw from Wilson in the game against Kent State last year. He had a really nice ball game, and, and they, they said they hoped that he could revisit uh, that, and he has here in his few limited carries tonight. He's looked very good. And that'd be a big weapon for them if they get a big back who can get things going here down in the red zone. Now they got Cleveland and Claire as your speed backs. And Wilson could be the finisher. Now they'll throw a slant pattern to the end zone. Touchdown! Well, it seems only fair that T.O. Redding gets one after he had one taken away by penalty on one of the best catches you'll see in a long time. So Redding, fifth catch of the night. And a really nice route. He shook Jarrell Foster right at the start of the route where he had, had Foster take a, a false step to the outside. That gave him the inside, and it was an easy throw on the, on the RPO, the run pass option. Four plays, 38 yards, set up by the Matt Wilcox 62-yard kick return. Exactly 11 minutes remaining. So Bowling Green has reestablished that 25-point lead. And they're getting ever closer to a second win on the season and a second win in the MAC. And then running by Wilson enabled them to get this passing game open and ready with the score. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Allstate, official protector of college football fans, and Sonic's Car Hop Classic. Pair a foot-long coney or a cheeseburger with onion rings for $2.99. A veritable plethora of great catches tonight from Bowling Green receivers and some passes from Jarrett Dagey. Now, that last one ended up not counting because of a holding penalty, but the good news is T.O. Redding was able to get it back on a throw from Dagey, who has been super sharp, 14 of 18 for 174 and two touchdowns. We were talking during the break, Ray. Really, there was only one moment where he kind of played like an 18-year-old, but otherwise he's played very, very well. Yeah, he had that one little stretch where he had the um – Illegal grounding, and then uh, kind of uh, just ran backwards on a play. Uh, and those were back-to-back. -back. Other than that, he's been really good. And another guy who's been really good for goal, for the Golden Flash is, is this guy, Justin Rankin. And they'll move him. I mentioned it all over the place. You see, he's in the backfield. He'll be at one slot receiver. He'll be at another slot receiver. And then he'll come across in motion and give him a good look. And that opens things up for ball for a bolus. So Rankin is a very valuable member of this team and productive. Six catches for 48 yards, leading and receiving, and he's got four rushes for 39 more, averaging almost 10 yards a carry. He needs more touches. Well, he's not going to get him standing on the sidelines at the moment. Bolus will roll to his right, step in and gun it, and it's picked. At the 35-yard line by Marcus Milton. Milton trying to make something happen. Makes another man miss. He'll get by the lineman. Milton will not get by Will Matthews. But it's going to be an interception for Marcus Milton, his third of the season. And Bolas tried to force that thing in there. He threw that thing as hard as he could because he saw Milton closing. And he, he believed that he could get it in there. And he couldn't. 
Milton comes up and steps in front and makes the catch, and then he makes a great run. I mean, he's all over the place. Yeah, and, you know, some good blocking downfield, too, by his Falcons team. Finished with a nice stiff arm, too. This is the fifth time Bowling Green has started the night in Kent State territory. Third time because of a turnover. And they've had 10 possessions, so they're batting 500. Here they're only 14 yards away from adding six more points. And their previous two takeaways, they, they ended up with field goals. And they're going to move... Uh, put a new quarterback in the ballgame. Yeah, Grant Loy, redshirt freshman from New Washington, Ohio, is going to get a chance here. He's played a little bit this year. It's been an interesting year for Bowling Green regarding their quarterback play, and Loy will lose a little bit here. James Morgan, Jared Dagey, Grant Loy have all played. Dagey had the start against Middle Tennessee, became the first true freshman to start since the 80s at quarterback, played very well, but then ended up getting hurt and missing a handful of games. They went back to Morgan. They went tried Loy. And it seems like Diggy is the guy now. There's no question about it. And Grant Loy is the backup now, and he's really come a long way. He was a walk-on initially, and they were impressed with him in this past spring enough to the point where they gave him a scholarship. And he'll keep it. And he will get hit and get hit hard, and the ball actually popped out for a moment. Now the referees and the officials are saying that he was down. But John Cunningham still playing with that chip on his shoulder pads, able to come with a big hit there down to the 11-yard line, third down and seven. This is a smack. Yeah, and he came a long way. I mean, he's down there at nose tackle, and he runs down the field, and he figures if I'm going this far, I might as well make it worth my while, and he certainly did. That was a hard hit for Loy. Clock now under nine and a half left in this bit. Going to throw toward the end zone. Couple of hand fighters for the football. Pass going to be incomplete. Both players sort of locked up there in the pass. A little bit underthrown. Yeah, I think a little bit is a uh, generous call by you. That was woefully underthrown. Well, I'm just trying to be a nice guy every once in a while. You want to throw that thing up and where your guy can go up and get it, not go down and get it. So it's fourth down, and out comes the field goal team. Jake Suter from 28. You mentioned that he hasn't missed all season inside 40. And he's got a good holder in Davidson, the punter, who has not been needed very much tonight. And put up three more for Bowling Green. 44-16. The Falcons moving closer to their second win of the season and their second win in conference play. We're looking very much forward to this doubleheader on ABC Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. Number four, Clemson. And that is tonight's ranking. Number four, Clemson. Number 20, NC State. And then at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, 13th ranked Virginia Tech and number 10, Miami. Hurricanes are undefeated. They've played some very close games. Nothing to make you think this one's going to be any different. Both of these games are very important in the ACC for obvious reasons and also the college football playoff. And, of course, they are streaming live on the ESPN app. You, uh, you and I are big Clemson fans as far as we like their chances. I do. I and you, Where did you put them in your top six? I had them at number three, actually. I okay. had Notre Dame four. I, w I went with Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, and then uh, on the outside looking in, Ohio State and Oklahoma. All right. But there's a lot, still a lot of football oh, this, to be played. This is just starting. You know, I, as, if I look out, you know, I, I don't know that – I don't know if George is going to make it. And people don't want to hear that, and they're number one right now. But that's, well, that's my would, personal feeling. What would keep them from making it? They're going to get blown out by Alabama in the, in the championship game as well. Well, you've heard the debate already. If they, what if they don't? What, you know, there's, if it's there's, a close there's, game, there's some yeah, I got that. that the SEC will get both those guys in if they both make it to the championship game. Now, hell, yeah. Alabama's got LSU right? Saturday. Yeah, and wait till you see what they do to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's my opinion. You already called that one. So don't bother watching that one, folks. Ray. Oh, you can watch. I mean, especially if, you, if you're a Bama fan, you'll love it. At the six. 
Oh, nice little run back here by Jamal Parker. The first time he has returned to kick. He hurdled his own man. Well, time for tonight's What to Watch For, brought to you by Taco Bell. We've talked about this being the kickoff night for Maction. With a couple of games in the league tomorrow night on ESPN2 Central and Western. They hate each other's guts. Thursday, wow. Northern Illinois and Toledo. They have become bitter rivals yeah. on the field in the MAC in football. Not so much in basketball, but in football. Because Central they've been playing Western, for everything right, in the last few All the few time. Years. Central and Western hate each other no matter what they play in. And the next week, Ball State in Eastern, Central and Kent, and then Ohio Akron on November 7. Love, love, love the MAC. A little lack of concentration there. Keon Singleton. Unable to hang on to that. And this, this MAC conference is still kind of up in the air. You, you look at the, the West, and, and you have both Toledo and Northern Illinois undefeated in MAC play. Western one game with one loss, Central with two right there, and, and that's pretty jammed up. And then on the other side, Akron seems to be in control, but Ohio's right on their heels. So we'll Akron see. had a great win in Kalamazoo on that rain delay game. When they ended up beating Western on a game that was moved to Sunday, that was a big win for Terry Bowden. Catch made there again by Justin Rankin, and he'll get into Bowling Green territory at the 49-yard line, and unfortunately, Garth is shaken up. He is a hitter, Fred Garth. He's been all over the field tonight. Leading tackler in the ball game. Out of that uh, junior college program in the state of Mississippi that has so many fine teams. He had his head down a little bit on that hit. And that will get you uh, in trouble on occasion. There goes Rankin in motion. Bolas on the draw and didn't fool anybody. John Crossland, number 97, stopped it. May have penalty marker down. Yeah, it was thrown late along the sideline. And I, I, don't, I thought I saw some weird movement prior to the snap, but they didn't stop the play. Illegal formation. Offense. More than play, four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, the receiver at the bottom was not up on the line of scrimmage, and he also was holding his hands up looking inside <laughs> for some direction. Didn't get any, and so he kind of was in that no man's land where he wasn't quite on the line, and he wasn't quite back far enough, but... They called him on it. So we take a, we've shown you a few matchups to look forward to. Bowling Green will be at Buffalo on November 7th. Coming back to the football, that is a terrific catch by Harrell. Yeah, great adjustment to the football. I mean, the coverage was all over him. Clint Stevens was, was you know, uh, shadowing the receiver Har Harrell and... It didn't matter. Harrell saw the ball and adjusted to it and makes a really nice catch. He got interfered with, too. Yeah, you're right. And he got hit in the face. <laughs> he earned that one. That was a penalty perfecta there. Bolas steps into the pocket, steps into the throw, and it's overshot incomplete. Looking ahead at Kent on November the 8th, they will be in Kalamazoo, Western Michigan. We'll host them there. And they have a midweek against Central Michigan coming up on November 14th. They'll at, be back here home. in Kent. Right. Yep. Second down, a lot of football to be played yet in the MAC. Already have a couple of teams bowl eligible. Northern Illinois and Toledo. Rockets at 7-1. and one. Get Going some for votes. Rankin here. The catch is made, but it's out of bounds. It'll be third down. And a 10. Just ran out of room over there. That was a nice throw. One of the better throws of the night, I think, from, yeah. from George Bolas. Well thrown ball. You really can't blame Rankin for being out of bounds. The ball kind of drifted him outside a little bit. He was pretty well covered there, too. Torian Hampton, 34, was right with him. You see Bolas' numbers on the night. He also has a 22-yard touchdown run. 
Goes to Rankin one more time, and he is just going to be overwhelmed by Bowling Green defenders. Sets up fourth down, and that's a gain of about three, so they're going to need seven to keep this drive alive. Yeah, and, and no doubt they'll go for it in this situation. And really, you know, with what do they have to lose? I, I, I think they, they should be playing a little bit more loose and, and free and, and gambling anyway. And they have a, a little bit here tonight. They had a couple of fourth downs they converted yeah. on their touchdown drive. Rankin now with eight catches, 67 yards. He's a target for a ninth catch, and it's intercepted. That's Clint Stevens, and he backs off. He, you know, he had coverage on another man, but he did what we call a slough technique where you see that and you kind of slough off and get some depth, and that quarterback isn't looking at you. He did not see him, and that's a great play by Stevens. That's his third pick of the season, second thrown by Bolas tonight, and the fourth Kent State turnover. So Bowling Green actually came into this game minus in turnovers. They're going to end up the night barring something really weird. Plus, they were minus two. They have not turned the ball over, so now they will be plus two. Stevens on a Dwyer high in West Palm Beach. You see, he has coverage on a receiver that's 15 yards in front of him on the field. But he saw the quarterback was set to throw it to Rankin up that seam, and he just sloughed off and made a play. No gain on the handoff there. It'll be second down and 10. We're under seven minutes in this game. You know, in talking with Mike Jenks, he said the, the biggest problem at, at quarterback, well, yeah, the biggest was the turnovers by James Morgan. The other one was his inability to connect on the, on the long shots down the field. And that's why he's so pleased with Daggy's effort tonight with his ability to protect the football. They're going to milk that clock down as much as they can. The clap and then the snap. Another, not a very long game that Bryson time. Denley. Yeah, Bryson Denley yep. getting some uh, action here late in the ball game. Richard Freshman from Warren, Michigan. That's in the Detroit Officials area. Official timeout for an injury. And we do have an official timeout, unfortunately, for an injury for a Kent State player. Stops the clock with 5.59 remaining in that one. We were told to look out for Denley if they had a chance to get him in the game. And so this he is the fourth running back used by Mike Jenks. Looks like he's on his way to grabbing his sixth victory as the head coach in Bowling Green. And that is John Cunningham on the ground. And uh, I've been in a similar situation with leg cramps. All right, now someone's going to ask, well, how can you cramp in cold weather? Because it's in the 30s. Uh, he'd been sweating and running around for three hours. That's, that's how. Because <laughs> we all understand it when somebody cramps up September 2nd when it's 90 degrees and 90% humidity darn near everywhere. Well, he's worked real hard to get himself in shape because he doesn't come off the field. I mean, yeah. they rotate guys a lot, but Cunningham <laughs> seldom will see himself over on the sideline when they're out on defense. Got that blitz package, five men on the line. See what they do. Well, they're going to give up a first down is what they're going to do is the handoff to Terrence Stevens, Jr., a sophomore running back. So a fifth running back getting an opportunity here, and that'll be a first down, a nice run there by Stevens. They are empty in the bench is Bowling Green. Five deep at the running back, and uh, they've all played pretty, pretty well tonight. That means they've had some good blocking. And you think about what we talked about early in the night, a patchwork offensive line tonight for this group. Tim McAuliffe, their veteran center, unable to go. So they had to get Caleb Bright in to start a center for the first time tonight in his career. He started in other spots on the line. They lost left a left guard in uh, Taborn earlier tonight. And yet, look at the holes. That's Denley. And Denley continuing down the sideline. There's a flag down, however, back at the 30-yard line. And the other guy, Jack Kramer, their normal right guard, was out tonight. And so Clark Clancy had to take that spot. But you know where they played really well is out at the, out the tackles. Holding that we've called offense, Austin Labus. Number 55, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. And I think that's called right. Labus's name and then Ryan Hunter as well. So yeah. they, they've been really good at the tackles. And you know what? Those guys that have filled in, done an admirable job. They've been able to move the football really well tonight. 
Yeah, Bowling Green could be a spoiler the rest of the way for your hopes if you run into these guys. They seem to have the quarterback situation solved with Jared Dagey. They've run the ball well tonight. They've actually had a very balanced approach to reach the 400-yard mark. And the, the one spoil alert that they have on their on their schedule is Toledo, and they have them at home, and that's a big rivalry game, and they would love nothing better than to rock the Rockets' boat. Stevens. Let's not forget, for, for back fans who, or for fans who may not know that, that Toledo has an actual rocket on campus. Allegedly, the coordinates are set to land on the Bowling yes. Green campus. That is the legend anyway. We're never, hopefully, ever going to find out if that's true. But that just shows you that Officials these are two schools, Toledo and Bowling Green, not fond of each other now. Eboigbe shaking up number 58, the junior from Lithonia, Georgia. And speaking of Georgia, for Bowling Green fans, a couple of neat road trips that they want to make, and one will be to Atlanta next year to take on Paul Johnson and the A and B backs of Georgia Tech, and another one will be Oregon. They ain't messing around with the schedule, no, that's for sure. And that's a, that's, it's a long trip, but it's a fun trip. Really, really beautiful. They were doing something to the Boyd Bay's face, but I, I couldn't see exactly what it was. And then when that, we had a close-up, it looked like maybe uh, something with his eye. Well, it's very possible that the, the surface of this field made of the ground-up tires could have brushed into his eyes. I'm surprised it doesn't yeah. happen more often. There's a lot of rubber down on that field. Yeah. We walked on it pregame, and I don't know how they play on that stuff, to be honest with you. I like the grass, the mother nature. And the 20, 25, maybe the 26, 27-yard line short of the first down, way short of the first down, actually. And that is Terrence Stevens again. So it's going to be third down and very long here for this Falcon offense. He was able to stay in bounds, keep the clock going at 3:15. Bowling Green will improve to two and seven. Kent State will drop to two and seven. Bowling Green two and three in the MAC East, and Kent State will drop. Their MAC record will drop to one and four. And Mike Jenks' ball club is uh, starting out action just where they they left off last year. Went three and one in November. And uh, I know it's not quite November yet. Give us a few hours. But uh, they're making that late run again. And now we have a Bowling Green player shaking up. Yeah, that's Clancy. On the offensive line, yeah. Clark Clancy, the right guard out of Troy, Michigan. You could ill afford to lose another one of those guys. No, that, that's, that, that, that could really be a, a thorn for the rest of their season if they can't pass together any kind of offensive line at all. And Clancy's mates helping him off. It's going to be a fourth down and long now following that play. So Joe Davidson is back out. I think this is just the second time we've seen this excellent punter. He can just let loose on this one. He got a finalist for the Ray Guy Award. Under two minutes. Veteran punter knows how to milk a clock, but the snap he can't handle. Let's see if he can ad lib something. Might be able to get here. it off. But he's left footed. That's the problem. He's rolling yeah. it to his right. Yes. <laughs> so after we built him up, it doesn't always work that way. So it's going to be a good opportunity here for Kent State in the final minute and 40 seconds with all three of their timeouts to put together a touchdown drive. That's more exertion than Davidson thought he would have to expend here tonight. Well, he had been sitting for a while other than to come out to hold for kicks. And he gets an audience with a head coach. <laughs> That's something he didn't want to have to deal with tonight either. Is a conversation with Mike Jinx. Timeout on the field. For this will be a fifth consecutive victory for Bowling Green over Kent in this series. And over the last three meetings, Ray, they have outscored them, unless something happens here, 134 to 23. Yeah, that looks like the old anniversary trophy is uh, going to be lost in Bowling Green's stadium <laughs> for a few years. A 20-year-old, I mean, the, <laughs> they've been looking for it. They've yeah, talked about it. They said, no, we're looking for it. We can't find it. And just yesterday, they found this trophy hidden somewhere. Not hidden, but they just. Yeah, it was under a pile of stuff, stuff, they said, is how they explained it. 
So. Well, the tradition is back. So Bolos will get a chance to finish this game off, perhaps with a touchdown. Dumps a little screen out here. It's once again to Justin Rankin, but this time Bowling Green was all over it. That's going to be a loss back to the 31 of six yards. And Jack Walls in there, a junior out of Cleveland. Take a moment to thank the coaching staffs and the sports information staff for both Bowling Green and Kent State. And all of you for being with us tonight. Spotter Jamie Turner, statistician Paul Newman, our booth man Navid. And that's just dropped. And of course our crew. Third down, 17, 55 seconds remaining. Kerrigan unable to hang on to that. Yeah, and that's his second drop tonight. He dropped that deep ball earlier that, that hit him right in the bread basket. And, and that's, you know, when, when you're struggling, those are the things that stand out to me. The, the, the drop balls, the, the unforced errors in terms of penalties, uh, just those little things that keep adding up. Bolus. Kerrigan will hang on to this one, trying to beat three defenders. He'll get it back to the line of scrimmage, original line of scrimmage, maybe even inside of that to the 23-yard line. So it'll be fourth down now and about nine. And the thing about Kerrigan is he's one of the, the faster, more elusive guys on this Kent State offense, and he just doesn't get a lot of touches. And I don't know if it's because he drops the ball like we've seen a couple times tonight or, or they just haven't found a way to get him involved as much. Fourth try on fourth down. They've hit two out of three. Going to go for it all right here. Incomplete to call in the end zone. Great job at the end by Ty Redding of getting that ball out because Kerrigan had it. it I mean, we, you were waiting to, to yell touchdown, and I, I was cheering for you, but that ball well, came thank out. You. I knew you had my back. Oh, 17 seconds to go. And we'll have a knee here. Mike Jinks and his staff will celebrate on the trip back to Bowling Green. Picking up a second win this season. It'll be a happy little bus ride. Mike Jinks has had a tough year. Second one in a row. And, you know, I spoke with him a little bit, and he's, they're not that far away right now. And that, that's the thing. They have some talented players. The, the quarterback piece really set them back here early in the year, and I think they've got that figured out now with Jarrett Dagey. And he is a freshman and an 18-year-old, so you can imagine now with coaching, with weight training, with all the things, uh, the Bowling Green could make some noise next season, and they're going to be a pest the rest of this season too. Their highest scoring game of the season where they put up the 44 tonight to get their second win in conference play and their second win this season. So the final score for the final time tonight, Bowling Green defeats Kent State 44 to 16. For Ray Bentley and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for watching. Coming up next, SEC Story. Good night from Kent, Ohio.